order at 7.03 p.m. Please rise. Jane Seifel, would you please lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, everyone. Welcome to the Thursday, December 7th, uh, Thursday, December 14th, Municipal Budget Committee. My name is Steve LeBranch. I'm the chairman. Ginny, if you would introduce yourself and the members, please introduce themselves to the uh, public. Jimmy Bridal, school board representative. Sonny Kravitz. Chuck Rage, representative of uh, Hampton Beach Village District. Regina Barnes, board of selectmen representative. Blake Plouffe. Jones. David Maurer. And we have our minutes recorder, Barbara Kravitz, here as well. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing we're going to be doing tonight is the budget for the town clerk. So, Jane, would you please come up? And when, when you get to, when you please introduce yourself, Jane, so that the people at home, I mean, we all know who you are, but people at home can say, oh, that's Jane, and she's the town clerk. I'm Jane. I'm the town clerk. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you Seems very much. Seems a little much. redundant, yeah. but okay. <laughs> yes, sir. We're going to move the uh, election registration <laughs> by statistics for $259,925. All second. Uh, right? Second. I, Mike seconded oh, sec it. Mike did. Okay. Yeah. So we have <clears throat> Tim moved it. Mike seconded it. Would you like to um, just go through your budget and... Absolutely. Uh, could I just get that number again, please? 259 Okay. Thank you for taking the time to review my 2018 budget proposal. As in years past, my budget increases during the even-numbered years because of the number of elections held in those years. Uh, my 2018 proposed budget has an increase of 8%. This is mostly due to that election cycle. Um, I had additional funding in the budget which was presented to the selectmen for another full-time clerk in order to have an additional window open to the public. This funding was removed from the budget, <coughs> which is before you, as the selectmen have taken the approach that um, this funding should be approved through a warrant article. So I'm sure that's something you'll see later on. Um, Jane, I, um, Fred, could I ask you, are we going to be seeing that tonight? Right there. <laughs> okay. The the only reason I'm inter interrupting for a minute is that um, you may want to stay here when we go over that. Okay. Okay. Because it, you know you can uh, if you have something to say about it. So okay, continue. If please. it's okay with you, I will say what what I need to say now. And if you have any other questions after the fact, we don't once, have... once you see the Warren article, because I kind of had it in my presentation anyway. So. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead. Okay. Um, <coughs> Pending approval by the selectmen and the Teamster union, Teamsters Union, it was my plan uh, to promote the bookkeeper to senior bookkeeper and change the title of bookkeeper to full-time assistant clerk. Currently, there is no position in the Teamsters bargaining agreement for a full-time assistant clerk, only part-time. <coughs> this plan would not, allow, would not add another person, position to the agreement but change an existing position that is not needed to the one that is and add one more body to the union. This plan, should the Warren article pass, increases the regular wages line item from $80,480 to $110,292. Uh, but as the budget before you stands now, the total requested is the same as last year. I just wanted to give you an overview of what we do in the town clerk's office because a lot of people don't necessarily know everything that we do. We do motor vehicle <coughs> registrations, boat registrations, dog licensing, OHRV registrations, hunting and fishing licenses, vital records and marriage licenses, voter registration, election administration, beach and transfer station decals, oaths of office, notary services, and wetlands applications. Um, I won't bother going over the, the, uh, the rest of the information as to why that extra position is, is needed. I'll do that later if we get to that point. Um, some of the increases that I have um, in the the 2018 budget is um, under part-time wages. I have a 50% per hour increase for the file clerk. <coughs> we were extremely uh, fortunate to hire a file clerk at $11 per hour. 
we're even more fortunate to find an employee who has stayed in the position at the salary, performing duties that not many people would want to perform. Rosemary has exceeded my expectations of this position and has been able to keep our filing relatively up to date and neatly organized. Not only has she been filing, but during elections, she collates and prepares absentee ballots for the clerks and me to distribute to voters. The value of this position is priceless. Under town clerk wages, um, originally I had a 3% um, increase there. The, the uh, selectmen reduced that to 2%. Uh, the town clerk is not an, is an elected official, not a union employee or a non-union employee. I had budgeted for a 3% increase in the town clerk's salary. However, the Board of Selectmen has opted to reduce that amount to 2%, which represents a difference of $620. I respectfully ask that you reinstate the 3% increase. I would caution comparing elected officials to union or non-union employees as those employees mm -hmm. receive monetary benefits that the, town, that the town clerk and tax collector do not and those employees do not have to run for their positions every three years. Some non-union employees are able to sell back leave time to cover employee costs of medical and dental benefits as well as additional payments to the New Hampshire retirement system. Elected officials cannot. It is my understanding um, as well that if the budget does not pass, the selectmen still have the authority to provide non-union employees with an increase. The town clerk and the tax collector in recent years have not been included in that increase as such and have had four years over the past 10 years that the positions did not receive a wage adjustment. I strongly believe that every employee should receive an increase as their cost of doing business increases just as the town's does. So please do not mistake my caution of comparison as a lack of support for any other employees in town. The 3% that I have requested is <coughs> amounts to $1,860. This is nine-tenths of 1% of the increase in motor vehicle revenue thus far alone in 2017. To go even further and to put it even more into perspective, this increase is a mere five-hundredths of 1% of the total revenue collected for the town in 2016 and only, and only four-hundredths of 1% of the total revenue projected for the town <coughs> in 2017. I think based on the responsibility held by the town clerk, the revenue and the uh, the re revenue the position and its staff collects, and the fact that all of this has been done without an increase in personnel <coughs> over the 11 year period for which I have held the office of town clerk, this 3% increase is extremely reasonable and not to mention well deserved. <coughs> Additionally, this position is still underpaid when compared to other towns with similar year round population, and this is still not taking into consideration that our town population increases to if not the largest city in the state of New Hampshire, at least one of the largest cities in New Hampshire during the summer months. I am happy to show you the results of my research from 2016, which shows Hampton as the busiest in its population class, yet the lowest paid for the same. Under computer support, um, as minor as it is, that's up $29. That's just because the software that we um, use for motor vehicle registrations and dog licensing um, has gone up. Uh, under staff development, um, I have increased this line item simply because some conferences have not been budgeted in the past and it has been overspent for the past few years. The conferences in which I attend are crucial to keeping the office running efficiently and smoothly and to keep myself and my staff up to date on current laws and practices that directly affect the operations of the office, elections, motor vehicle registrations, and other facets of our duties. Under voter registration, um, although we have more elections in 2018 than we did in 2017. This increase is minimal at $532, and it is merely due to the additional staffing needed to register voters at the deliberative session, uh, or check in voters at the deliberative session in February, and register voters at the New Hampshire primary in September and the general election in November. Under um, election administration, uh, again, this, this budget is cyclical. It fluctuates up and down like a roller coaster every other year, the uphill climb during even numbered years and sailing downhill in the odd numbered years. 2018 brings technically four elections, deliberative session in February, town meeting in March, New Hampshire primary in September, and general election in November. All of these elections require staffing and food service. Additionally, each election comes with coding for the AccuVote memory cards. 
within the election expense line item, we have added one more Accuvo machine to our arsenal of election tools. This comes with an, addi an additional $225 for annual maintenance, but we, the moderator and I, believe considering that the machines are getting older and there is no replacement, replacement model allowable by New Hampshire election law that we needed to obtain one more machine to cover the cost when a machine is pulled out of service for one reason or another. But make no mistake, these machines are amazingly accurate. That is all I have, and if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, of my audit. <coughs> we just had some presentation of what is to be a Warren article, which I believe Fred said we're going to be seeing, seeing tonight. Is that right, Fred? Warren articles are selected and approved. We haven't seen her here. Okay, so we're not going to be seeing that tonight. Right oh, we are. Okay, we will be seeing it tonight. Yes, we will. Up to you. So I would suggest that <clears throat> we finish with the uh, uh, 4140 budget mm -hmm. uh, and then go move directly to that Warren article so that we can be we'll continuous see. in conversation on the matter, or we can lump them together. But she, she just commingled them, and I don't <coughs> know how to untangle that. Well, you... We're going to have to approve this budget. I'm agreeing with that. And then, so yes, I would say that that makes perfect sense. Okay. So I'll just I'll just stay off that topic until we get to the Warren article itself. And I would hope that the chair would uh, endorse that for, for all of us. Okay. Any <clears throat> any questions? Anybody here have any questions for Jane? Yeah, I have. Go I ahead. Have a general question. Yes. On the voter registration, how many Democrats, how many independents? And I don't have that on, on, on me right now. Okay. I was just I'm curious. happy to get that to yeah. you, though. Because I expect the Republicans and Democrats are close, <coughs> but the independents. Uh, it's very close. Yeah. <coughs> are you finished, Sonny? Sonny? Hmm? Are you finished? Yeah. Okay. Um, Ginny, you wanted to. Well, Regina, why did the selectmen take out the $29,000 out of the budget? And move it to a Warren article. What was the reasoning? Well, because we have a lot of things we're going to be putting on the warrant this year. Yeah. So we decided that it would be best to have it be a choice of the voters just for this year. I think there was some confusion that the vote was saying that the selectmen shouldn't necessarily have the authority to establish new positions. That is not what I voted on that night, and I don't believe that is what the rest of the vo board voted on. We were just looking at it. Well, I'll tell you what I was thinking of, that we're going to be asking for $13, $14 million this year, and we really need to get that Warren article passed. So anything else, and I believe me, I know how much help mm -hmm. the town clerk's office needs, but we just thought maybe putting it on a Warren article this year and leaving it in it for the public to, to decide would be the best thing to do. Okay, and what was the percentage of the raise that you gave to the non-contractual one point six five percent. How much? One point six five. One point six five. So that's why we did the two instead of the three. Did anyone at get a raise from the um, undesignated balance at the end of the year? Did anybody get any money from that? From the um, Chrissy, can you help me out? The unassigned the, fund. Balance? No, not the. Are you the unassigned the, fund? Or are you talking about the? I'm talking about when you take your expenses and that. Take them from your revenue, subtract right. the expenses, the money that's left. Did anybody get any raises out of that money? No, all the money came out of the line, the merit raise merit line, line item, right? Oh, you have a merit line? We have a merit line in personnel <coughs> administration, which is one of the topics, for, or one of the sections for later tonight. Okay. And how much is that? That's your favorite line. Oh, it but may be. I just... Remember a merit? I do remember merit. I just yeah. didn't know the town had one. <laughs> The town council got four percent back to April. Let's see, it was twenty eight, eight ninety one and seventeen, and it's down to twenty five thousand two hundred ninety two dollars for the budget in front of you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else have any questions? Just the one right percent here. was six hundred and how much? Six hundred and twenty dollars, I think it was. <coughs> Hold on, I have it right here. And what is what is a, a, a town clerk getting us in a town similar to, to this, I believe. Some of them are up as high as 80000 The average is around seventy, seventy-two. So, <clears throat> So we're getting a bargain. Mm -hmm. 
and I, I and I've and what I've been seeing in the town is continually losing people for a small amount of money. So I I, I think that's not a big request. You're making a motion, Chuck. So no, I like to a motion make a motion. On the table. I'm sorry. Oh. Right. So that's my statement. Maybe I will make a motion after. After we approve this this bottom line, that's when we can. That's when we can make a, a motion <clears throat> to increase it. Okay, go ahead. I'm getting confused. What? Last week we talked about selectmen can approve raises. We cannot approve raises. <coughs> We question things, we ask questions about it, but it's not our job, and uh, unless it's a Warren article, which I would agree with you, is the way to go. We can't do that as a budget committee, it's up to the select people. Gina, are we out this time? Correct? Yes, that is what we established last week. I 100% agree with you. So we can't say, let's have $680. We can vote it in here. We, we are not allowed to do that. Okay. We're not a legislative committee. Well, Mr. Chairman. Well, yes, no? No, no, wait, wait. If you're looking at one of these sublines, this committee can increase or decrease one of these sublines. Okay, so um, I think last week that issue with the uh, Parks and Rec Department was different. That was more a personnel. That, that had to do with personnel. As Jane pointed out, she's an elected official. It's a little bit different. Um, so, go ahead. And the other problem is, I'm an elected official as well. So, I don't feel comfortable. I mean, like I said, the 2% was because everyone else got the 1.65. And we know how much you do, and we all appreciate it. But at the same time, the town also needs to figure out <coughs> how they're going to start reviewing everyone's wages because we're not in line and throughout the whole town. I mean, people think that we're in line, people think that we're over the line, but in reality, we're not. So, like I said, the selectmen, <coughs> number one priority this year, it's got to be the number one priority. we got to throw money into that wastewater treatment plant. And everything that's being done this year does not mean that's how it's going to be done I don't believe that means how it's going to be done next year, but this year is sort of special, and that's why we did what we did. And I think the budget committee talk about it, do whatever you wish. But well, we talked about this uh, last Thursday. We had it wasn't it wasn't just the Parks and Rec Department. There was also discussion um, with the building inspector that, that Tim had about he asked him if there was an increase in that budget. And, um, and, uh, and Kevin answered, no. But then in reality, a little bit later on, we found out that he got a 5% raise back in April. But, uh, <laughs> but the thing is that, the thing is that <clears throat> in both cases, I didn't think it was, when it comes to personnel matters and, and raises and stuff like that, uh, we established that it's not up to this board to be given hand and out raises. Uh, that's what we established last week. So, Tim? I do not believe that we established such a thing. Uh, <clears throat> I do know, as a factual matter, <coughs> that uh, Selectman Chairman Waddell actually asked the Tom Energy to do a recap of the budget process. And uh, Mr. Welch correctly stated that the budget committee owns the proposed budget, the selectmen own the default budget. So what we choose to put in the proposed budget is the budget committee's decision. There is no law that says otherwise. There is much law that says exactly that thing. So if we decide to give someone a raise, or we decide to let me rephrase that. Increase a line. If we decide to increase or decrease a line that is our I think authority that, that's, okay. that is our duty. Okay. And no conversation can change that reality. Okay. So hold on, Tim. So what you're saying is that we can increase a line. We're not giving out a raise. That's what you just said. We don't make disbursements. We make appropriations. I can look or rather, we make proposed 
appropriate. Okay, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah I agree. Okay. Chuck, did you have something that you wanted to add to that? I think, uh, I think Tim just what said Tim it. was saying, that when we do a budget, and the budget is voted on, then the village district, so one, it's a different, different process, I, 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 but I think it's the same rules that that budget can be changed by the vote, by the, by the, the, uh, the town meeting. <clears throat> so I don't see why it can't, we can't put it in there now if, if, if everybody feels they want to change it, okay. up or down. Okay. Uh, you had something, Sonny, you wanted to say? Yeah, I, well, Regina was saying 2% raise. I, you gave Mark Gerald 4% back at, going back to April. So, <laughs> you know, that was rewarding. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, all, over, budget, all over the place here. Okay. Well, just to be clear, what we're discussing is whether or not the Budget Committee has the authority to raise or decrease an appropriation in the proposed budget that's brought to us. Okay. I would say yes. Okay, so that's the end of the, that whole topic. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to uh, $259,925. Anybody have any more questions about this particular budget? I do. Say, so see, none. Well, please. <coughs> um, the bookkeeper to assistant town clerk, that's the Warren article, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, last year, wasn't we gave, or rather, you were, you were uh, <coughs> given an additional part time employee? That was the file clerk that I mentioned that I put in for a 50, right. 50 so, cent raise. So it's not true to say you haven't had any new employees in several years? I didn't say that. Okay. I, know I didn't say you did. Okay. So it's still being yeah. true to say that. Yes, that's correct. Okay. The supervisor of the checklist is in your budget. Yes. And they are also elected officials. Right. And I believe it was last year, the year before, we put in, or rather you proposed, and we agreed to an increase for their, their pay? Correct. Right. We're not doing that this year, correct? Correct. Um, I note that um, the moderator is also in your budget. Correct. And uh, I was looking back in history, and I find that he hasn't had an increment in his pay in over 20 years. That's correct. And I, and I actually called him and suggested that we put a raise in there for him as well, and he declined. He asked me not to. Mm-hmm. Okay. And did he say why he would uh, prefer not to? Okay. Um, <coughs> and last year, I believe there was a raise in uh, your budget for yourself, correct? Correct. And, and that, that was granted and, and dispersed, correct? Correct. Okay. So you have got a raise last year. Yes. Prior two years to that was an attempt to get a raise via Warren article, mm -hmm. which, as you recall, I was strongly in favor of. It was one of the few that spoke in favor of it in the delivery session strongly. Uh, but now, suddenly, we're changing over for the last year, and now this year, no longer asking the voters in a separate Warren article for uh, a wage increase for you. We're going into the budget to do it. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, that was the which, only year that I had done that. Last year. All, all years prior had always been in the right. budget. This is the second year we're doing it. Putting in a raise in the budget. No, no, no. What I'm saying is when we did the Warren article two years ago or whenever that two was, in a row, that was, no, that was the one and only time that we've done that since I've been town clerk. Really? I thought we did that two years in a row. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe it was the year before because I had proposed raising mm -hmm. a raise to raising a pay to 60000 as I recall. It was like that, was budget, that was in the budget, though. Yeah, that was yeah. in the budget. Yeah. yeah. So I'm concerned we seem to be all over the place with elected officials. And the open question still remains as a, as a body politic, not just a budget committee, but this is body politic, whether elected officials get raises via a separate warrant article or stuffed into the budget. I don't, I don't have a clear answer to that, but I, don't, I think that uh, we, we can't keep fumbling around with this. In my opinion, we need more or less make a kind of a... Um, a broad discussion on the topic. It's pretty much always been to the discretion of the town clerk how to do that. Well, I think it ought to be the discretion of the body politic as a whole, or the voters, uh, to say, well, we want a separate one article, or we don't. Put it in the budget if you think it's right, or mm -hmm. maybe, you know, no more than current federal inflation rate goes into the budget. After that, it has to be a warrant article, or something. Something. You know, sometimes we have no rules of the road on this, I guess is what I'm saying. So, uh, 
You're also a, uh, a clerk for SAU 90, right? Yes. And SAU 21? Yes. Yeah. And what's your salary over there? Uh, SAU 90 is $250. Per year? Mm-hmm. Okay. And SAU 21 is $1,700. Seems like you ought to be getting a raise from one of those other guys rather than us. They actually, SAU 90 is increasing it to 350 this year, I believe. 350? Mm -hmm. From? From 250 to 350. Okay. <laughs> Last of the big time spenders. Absolutely. <laughs> now, all my, other, all my other questions are really related to the uh, assistant town clerk, which is a separate one article which we will discuss separately from this, right after we get done doing this, right? Right after we get done. <coughs> so this is my motion. optimum time to shut up. All right, David. I have a question that goes back to my original question. <coughs> Why can't, in reference to it, you suggest we close this one, and then we listen to the Warren article. Why can't we hear what it's in the Warren article help us make well, we have a motion. Yes. We have a motion on the floor. That's going to be a different motion. Plus. There's mention of a, somebody adding something to this, so <coughs> we have to do this first. Uh, it has to vote on it. We can revisit this mo after we vote yeah, on it. We, we can, can revisit we it can anytime you want. It, we so choose. Yeah. Okay. But mm. we have, so. That's There's no fine. reason why she can't put a warrant article to give herself a raise. <laughs> okay. Did, what, Sonny, we're not, we're, we already not talked really. about that. Okay. So we're ready to vote on this. All those in favor? Raise your hand, please. So it, let me call them out for Barbara. Tim Jones, Mr. Plouffe, Steve LeBranch. The budget as presented. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, Regina Barnes, Chuck Rage, Sonny Kravitz, and Ginny Bridal. No. Oh, Ginny Bridal's a no. And David, you are no. So David and Ginny knows everybody else was yes. Can we get the Warren articles, Fred? I can. You can make a motion now. I make a motion. Go ahead. To amend the budget. Yeah, and right. add six, 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 eight, six twenty. Six twenty to the uh, town six, clerk's wages. Six hundred and twenty dollars. Okay. Is there a second on that? Second. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. Second. Seconded by Ginny. Any discussion? Seeing none. What would be the total salary if that were granted? Um, 63, 63, 63, 853. 853, right. 63. So in either case, you're going to be making something over 63, either way. Right. Do you have a total cost by any chance for the town on that? Okay. Any other, no, no other discussion? Question. Go ahead. If we add the six fifty, I think it's past or twenty five, whatever the number, six something. Does that mean that the Warren article will then not be needed, or are we going no, to? No, it's nothing to do with the Warren article. Nothing to do with the Warren article. Different, different That's going to be completely different. 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 No, the Warren article is completely different. different. Yeah. 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 Nothing to do with their pay. Yeah, this is that's completely different. We're yeah. talking about okay. Pay from any other questions? Seeing none. Those in favor, raise your hand. So we have uh, David, Steve LeBranch, Chuck Rage, Sonny Kravitz, and Ginny Bridal. And, and those you can put me in there, too. And Tim yeah. Jones. Those opposed? <coughs> Mike Plouffe and, and Mike Plouffe is a, <coughs> a nay, and Regina is abstaining. Okay. And that was 620, correct? So yes. Sure that I, okay. So increase that to <coughs> 259925 okay. by 620. Please. Mr. Chairman, you got the Warren articles. Is there a copy for each of us? <coughs> of course. But of course. If you would um, send one down to Barbara. <coughs> so we have Mike, Tim. Let's send one for Barbara as well, please. And then we have. Regina. Well, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Send one to Bob. Can I, <laughs> can I take a minute and on that last motion to increase six hundred and twenty dollars? Six twenty for yourself. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And who, no, no. Who six twenty on on the uh, account forty one twenty. Is it? 
4140. Election, comma, registration, and vital statistics. Also known as the, well, that's what it says. That's exactly well, what You can says. direct it to the subline item, which is 41401. Okay. <coughs> so, if you want to turn. The vote was made <coughs> by? Uh, the village district. And the second? Was by the school board. Okay. Thank you. Okay, if you turn to page two of the uh, warrant articles that we just were handed, <clears throat> you'll see there's a warrant article, full-time town clerk assistant. Shall the town of Hampton raise an appropriate the sum of $44,662 for the purpose of hiring a full-time town clerk assistant? No. The warrant article contains the cost of 39 weeks from April 1st, uh, 2018 to December 31st, 2018. Total yearly cost $59,549. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen 4 0. So moved. Second. Sec moved by Tim, seconded by Regina. Um, anybody have um, questions? Questions? Go ahead. Could you help me with the Warren article contains the cost of 39 from April 1 to 2018? What happened January 1 to December 31? What it, doesn't get, it? it doesn't get voted on until March. It doesn't get so voted on. So it doesn't, wouldn't take effect until so April 1st. So therefore, after in 2019, this is a full-time position from January Correct. to whatever, right? Correct. It's not quite worded that way, but yeah. that's how it is. Probably <laughs> should be. Okay. So now, Jane, if you'd just go over this again and yeah, kind absolutely. of explain what's going <clears throat> I'll on I'll just here, kind of give you a background is. of why <clears throat> I feel it's necessary. Um, my staff is amazing, but they are not and should not be miracle workers. The days of it only being busy on the first and last day of the month and Mondays are over. As of August 30th, the revenue in 2017 is up more than $200,000 over last year at that time. August 28th was our busiest day on record. Um, it was eight times our 2017 daily average. Lines are to the door on most days. During these overly busy times, staff is unable to even use the restroom until their lunch break. <clears throat> not to mention the wait time for our customers. That does not make me happy. As far as the number of transactions we process, speaking motor vehicle only, keeping in mind that we do much more than just motor vehicle, although it is 90% of what we do, Ten years ago, in 2007, when I was first elected town clerk, there were 18,638 vehicles registered in town. This year, we project that number at 21,177 vehicles. The number of transactions in 2007 were 18,891, and this year we project that number to be 21,474. Total revenue collected in 2007 was 3.5 million, 2.7 million of that to be town funds, and this year's total is projected at $4.7 million, with $3.7 million of that to be town funds. That is an increase of $1 million over a 10-year period, with the exception of the file clerk who works 16 hours per week doing filing alone except during election time. Our staffing is exactly the same as it was in 2007. Not only have the numbers increased, but we also provide many more services than we did in 2007, <coughs> including OHRV registrations, hunting and fishing licenses, and our registered voters have increased significantly, up over 3,000 voters as well. There isn't a report available to monitor the number of phone calls received. The clerks are interrupted during that time, helping the customers in front of them, that are transferred to departments providing numerous pieces of information to phone customers per day. I have two part-timers who work the windows. One works Monday and Tuesday, the 17, total of 17 hours. The other works Wednesday through Friday, which is 21 hours. One can work, if available, an additional day and a half. The other, if available, can work only one extra day beyond her scheduled days. This becomes a problem when a full-timer or part-timer takes vacation, is out sick, or there is a family emergency. This scenario actually happened only a few weeks ago. One employee was away on vacation, another was off due to a family member having surgery. There were three of us scheduled for this particular day. I was already covering one of the positions um, at the window. One of the other two scheduled for that day had a family emergency over the weekend, which required her to take Monday and Tuesday off. 
I was covering the bookkeeper, which keeps the window closed until mid-morning to do the bookkeeping. That left one window open until the bookkeeping was completed on a Monday, which is not a good scenario. Our office has been running thin for several years now, and it has come to a point that I have no choice but to do something about it. We have tried to band-aid the situation for the past couple of years, but the time has come to fix the root of the problem. I would just like to say that a part-timer will not be useful to me at all as they cannot work any more hours than the 29 and a half hour policy allows. To add to the scenario, if this had been during election time, it would have been disastrous as I am tied to my desk during elections and have zero time to assist at the windows. The scenario happened again today. That, that entire scenario happened again today. And um, from 3 to 4 o'clock this afternoon, I had one clerk at the, working at the window. So, you know, it's, it's, um, if we had another window open, we would never go down to one window. So, you know, I think it's important that we um, are able to service our customers to the best of our ability, and the way we are staffed right now, <clears throat> it's nearly impossible. This month, it's December is, is generally a quiet month. We... Um, reasonably slow and this week I can't it's slow in comparison to the other months but um, this week's been much busier than than a normal December week so it's it's not changing it's only getting worse okay Jane <clears throat> if this um, if this warrant article passes how does that affect this the budget we just um, we just moved is it going to affect it in any way? Well, it would increase it by what the Warren article is. It will add to it. Yeah. Yeah. The default. Right. Yeah. That, I think I mentioned that um, the $80,480 would go to one ten two ninety two. Oh, yeah. Okay. Two, yeah, you did. Because that's what you had actually requested originally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see the difference. <laughs> okay. Anybody um, have questions for, for Jane about this? Yeah. How'd you do? Well, you sort of were putting your hand up, I... Eh? I was? Mm. Okay. This is very okay. subtle thing okay. that I noticed okay. with you. I... Very perceptive, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. Um, so this is the uh, the article that will take our current part-time part bookkeeper. Yeah, she's a full-time bookkeeper. Full-time bookkeeper. Yeah. Thank you. Right now, her position, and if I can just explain that, it might answer your question for you before you even ask it. Uh, my bookkeeper right now is, um, her, her position is uh, bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. In order to free up that position and salary, I would, I would promote her to senior bookkeeper, keeping that bookkeeper position would, would technically be vacant at that point, changing the job title from bookkeeper to assistant full-time assistant clerk because there is not a full-time assistant clerk in the contract right now. So assuming that this warrant article passes, will there be an open position for a bookkeeper of any type? No. Okay. So effectively you're moving this from a full-time bookkeeper to an assistant town clerk, correct? No. Correct. Okay. Yes. And you're also uh, <clears throat> taking action to convert this into a, a union position, correct? Correct. It is presently uh, not a union position. No, it, the bookkeeper. No, well. Uh, or the assistant. There is there is the not one, there is not a full time assistant clerk position right now. There are two part time assistant clerks, and those are con contractual. The part time. Ones. Yes. They are union. Yes. And Everyone in my is, office. Full time except is not. The full time is yes. The full time is okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I would change that bookkeeper position to assistant town clerk. Okay, so by making the assistant town clerk part of the union, you're keeping that person in the union mm -hmm. with a new title. Correct. So the only motivation uh, is for putting them in the union is to keep that person in a union. Is that correct? I don't really know how to answer why, why that. Are we why are we motivated to make an assistant town clerk a union position? What benefit? How does the town benefit well, I think you'd find by having an assistant town clerk that is a union member I versus think you an assistant town clerk that is not a union member? A, I think you would find some pushback from the union because there are already two part-time assistant clerks that are in the union. 
they would be doing the same job, just a difference of part-time and full-time. So the reason is because you're anticipating pushback from the union. But no, after, I think that's reasonable. I didn't say it was unreasonable. I'm just no, saying you're I'm anticipating. I'm not saying I'm doing it because I anticipate pushback. I'm doing it because I find that to be very reasonable because the, that position is technically already in the union as, an, as a part-timer. Why wouldn't it be in the union as a full-timer? The assistant town clerk is not in the union. That's, that's my what point. I'm talking about. I understand okay. that, but that's my point. There are two part-time assistant town clerks right now. It is the same job, only one is full. The, the new one, one be would be full-time, and the, the other two that I have are part-time. That wasn't clear. The part-timers are actually also called assistant town clerks? Yes. Okay, now that's clear. Yes. So now you're looking at more or less um, consistency across full Correct. and part-time. Yep. Thank you. Sometimes it's slow to get in my head. I'm saying. It's David, 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 David. Oh, no, hold on. Tim, have you finished? Tim? Oh, hell no. I didn't think so. Just hold on, David. Um, hold on. Money was done, sorry. No, no, that's okay. Relax. Plenty of time. Um, <coughs> the number in this Warren article is not the actual salary. It's a delta, right? It's a what? Delta. I'm not sure I understand. What Delta, the difference between what she's making now and what she will be making. Plus the additional full-timer. Right. So what is what is what would the total pay for this assistant contract actually be? <clears throat> the Warren article, Tim. No, it isn't. That's the Delta. That includes the increase as well for the for the bookkeeper. Is that correct, Christy? I just want to make sure that what they have is the That's same. That's what the you confused or I'm confused? So the salary itself for the assistant town clerk would be thirty six seven sixty four, and the additional to go to the senior bookkeeper for thirty nine weeks is two thousand nine hundred eighty four dollars. Well, how much will the assist the full time assistant town clerk make? Is the question thirty six seven sixty four? That but that's just for the thirty nine weeks, right? That's not for the full year. Is that correct, Christy? Yeah, cost for 39 weeks. Yeah, that's just from April 1st to the end of the end of the year. So the, the, hour, the hourly salary. rate. That's is the annual salary. Then I just oh, that is annual. Yeah. Okay, so I'm sorry. That is that is the annual. Say the number again, please. Thirty-six seven sixty-four. And that's for 39 weeks. No, that's annual. Fifty-two weeks. Yeah. Okay, so just to be clear, to clear up the confusion. The reason the number is on the one article of 59459 is yeah. because it includes other things beyond salary, like FICA, Correct. pension, stuff like that. Okay. I can understand that. All right. But I'm looking at the... <coughs> so what's on this one article is total cost, not pay. Okay. But Tim, I don't want to interrupt you, but I have to ask this question because I'm getting a little confused here. Okay. okay. After this passes, the full-time bookkeeper becomes a full-time town clerk assistant. No. The full-time bookkeeper becomes senior bookkeeper. And Are then... Hiring, let me ask you a question. Are you hiring somebody? Yes. You're hiring a new person in yes. that department. That's the part that's a little yes. bit confusing. Okay? There's I didn't a new get hire. That either. Thank you for putting okay. that up. That's I that. what... Can, can I try and explain That's where again we're... Uh, with okay. the disconnect, Okay is that there, at the okay. end of the day, there's going to be another employee in that department. Correct. Okay. Yes. Now we're getting to the bottom of this yes. thing. So we have, we have a bookkeeper right now. In the contract, there's a bookkeeper and senior bookkeeper. I don't need two bookkeepers in my office. That second position in the contract is wasted in my office. I don't need two. So in order to free up one of those positions without creating a whole new position within the contract, I my plan is to promote the bookkeeper to senior bookkeeper she will st it'll still be the same person she'll just be promoted and then change the the title of the bookkeeper to assistant town clerk full-time okay so we've got and then hire someone for that position right now we've got two bookkeepers no. we have two bookkeeper positions in the union there's only one bookkeeper okay and, and and after this passes assuming it passes 
How many bookkeepers will you have? <laughs> You'll still have one. One, but she'll be the senior bookkeeper. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care what flavor. I know it's she is. confusing the way the contract is written, so I I get your confusion. Believe me. And it, and it really matters to me not whether the union says we're entitled to have twenty bookkeepers. What matters is what we budget for, and right. and, and, and so uh, right now your budget reflects one bookkeeper or two. One. One. So this is truly, we're going to keep that one bookkeeper. This is a brand new position. Correct. I don't care what body you put in the position. It's a right. brand new position right. for the cost reflected in this warrant. Correct. Right? Right. Yes. So we have an extra body. Correct. Right. Now, as I recall from watching the always informative Board of Selectmen's meetings, that the uh, <laughs> physical office that you have does not accommodate this extra body. That's correct. And that uh, you had testified there, I believe, that uh, effectively that you didn't really give much consideration to how you were going to physically accommodate this person until after your request for this extra person was approved. I've given it consideration. I've definitely taken measurements and, and tried to figure out where I could put more in people. In terms of having a plan people. as to what do you I, have a plan? I, I mean, I have a general plan, but you want to tell us about it? I would need to talk to the building inspector to really be able to to make it happen. So basically there's no plan. I mean you have a general idea she but not a plan. She has an idea too. She has an idea but not a plan. That's that's fine. Ideas are plans. Wait, wait, do you want yeah. to share your idea with us? I can have think of many okay, dreams please. that were ideas that were never plans that I've had in life. Tim, she's going to share no, the, her idea. The, the problem with it is <laughs> we are so outgrowing this building already well. um, and it would displace other people. So my thought, when you, I, if only if we were in my office could I really show you what I'm talking about. But it would be to shorten up the desk space where my deputy currently sits and put the door, which currently faces out toward the lobby, toward the side, right. and put another That's exactly body what I figured you'd do. at the okay. front. Because having a window on the side makes no sense right. because no, the no. customers couldn't see them from there. Right. So your idea is to so maintain the existing physical space, the perimeter of the existing physical space, and re reorganize it. Correct. Okay. I, I can, Tim, it's, I no, understand. it's just a matter of moving a door and putting in a window. I understand. The, the previous now. comments about not having a plan were okay. concerning me. I wanted to get it cleared up. And now it's been cleared up. Thank you, Jane. I appreciate that. I have a plan. It's just here. There's nothing. Well, now it's know, in here, too. Nothing physically here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. In, in, uh, you, you mentioned the motivation. I think you mentioned the motivation behind this is that you've got long lines. A lot of times. A, a lot, lot time. a lot of the time, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but this, this is not going to increase the hours of operation at all, is it? No, that would defeat the purpose of me putting another person on because then I would have to split up my staff and have less windows open again. Right, so all I'm pointing out is that we're, we're, adding, a, we're adding a person, but we're not increasing the hours of uh, availability to Correct. those who wish to get <laughs> service by your office. Correct. And you're, you're full, when you say full-time, uh, what does full-time mean in your world? Is it 35 hours? 35 hours. 35 hours. Why is it impossible to work 40 hours there and increase the uh, hours of open operation? We would love that. So what's inhibiting you? It's not written that way in the union contract. Ah. So it's a union blockade on this, huh? So that might be a motivation to not make this position a union position, you know? Now, you mentioned you were constantly being interrupted by a telephone. And, and, and redirecting telephone calls to appropriate departments and whatnot. Um, has there been any consideration to uh, having a, uh, basically you're bearing the cost of other departments answering the phone for them more or less and transferring them out. Has there been any consideration to having some sort of <coughs> central operator, so to speak? You know? We had that at one time. I would love to have it back. What happened? Budget cuts. Fred, what happened? <laughs> I believe it, the position was eliminated at <laughs> yeah. that point before yes. I arrived. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It yes, it was. Yep. We had a receptionist. We had two part timers that, again, job shared. Okay. And they sat in the lobby and they did filing and that kind of thing when they weren't answering phones and they, they answered the phones and directed people to the appropriate departments that walked through the door. How much is a distraction is this phone uh, service switchboard operator function that you're providing? How much of a distraction is that to your office? A lot. A lot. 
while they are while our my clerks are trying to um, process sometimes very um, tedious transactions. Mm -hmm. So, so in, in fact, we had the old-fashioned version of a switchboard operator only with new technology, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, Tim, Tim yes. I don't mean to interrupt you again, but I have to ask. I'm, again, I'm getting lost here. You're taking all the calls? You're taking calls that don't belong in your department and transferring them to other Sometimes, places? Sometimes, yeah. If, if, if a customer doesn't look look up a phone number for a specific department, well, because, they, they call the town clerk because they think the town clerk is the secretary for the oh, entire okay, building. Because when I call, you get this long... Thing. People Computer don't look, thing. you know. People think it's like Mayberry RFD. It's you just call the town clerk and they'll take care of everything, right? <laughs> okay. And so it's okay. Just, that's that, what people I just do. needed yeah. that clarification yeah. because because when I when you call, you get this thing ah. that you have to listen to and press this if you want that. And most people just look up to see what the number of the town clerk is. Okay. Okay. That explains it. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead, Tim. So it would seem to me that if we had such a a uh, central switchboard, if you will. Uh, that that would contribute significantly, would you say, to helping to reduce the long lines? I wouldn't say that was significantly. Mm -hmm. Well, the work still say? needs to be done, and a switchboard person isn't going to be able. What to adjective do the work. would you apply to that? Would it reduce it at all? Would it have no effect? It would. Um, I would say it would re reduce the lines in that it would it would keep my clerk's focus on the job at hand instead of having to answer the phone. Right. And not having to go back and forth, and that and interrupt, would be and interrupting the customer at the window. And that would be a noticeable improvement. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I am uncomfortable, Mr. Chairman, with this uh, this position. Um, I'm not convinced that it's going to reduce the lines. Um, I am uncomfortable that we're restricted to full-time defined as 35 hours simply because it's a union and apparently we don't know how to negotiate with unions properly. Uh, whoever we is, I don't know who's doing the negotiations, I'm not blaming any person individually. Uh, just saying that this is a problem is, is that we, we're restricting these hours and frankly a lot of residents I'm quite sure would be delighted if we were not only open on Friday afternoon, which we're not. But would be delighted if they could actually come in here on Saturday and do their their, their work. I will tell you, I am a hundred percent against that. Well, for the that's fine. For the safety I'm of talking, my clerks with no one else in the building. Well, I'm not saying no one else should be in the building. I'm saying you know that accommodations ought to be made uh, as much as possible for the convenience of the taxpayers when they're coming in to transact uh, business with their their local government. And, you know, uh, I don't see that this position. Uh, uh, contributes toward that end uh, in, in a significant way. Uh, we're creating a new position into the union, the very thing that's preventing us from having full-time defined as, more, you know, 40 hours, which is the normal thing in the world, I think. Um, I just I just don't like it. Okay. And that's it. I have all I got to say. Thank you very much. You know, I want to just mention one more thing about this phone thing, because when I I have your card, with your, the number that goes directly to the town clerk's office. And usually when I call, I get an answering machine. We don't have an answering machine on our line. Well, it's there's a voice, there's a voicemail to give you more, you know, that, and that's why we did that. Our office hours, yeah, you go know, what about days were, 10 minutes what, worth of what days were closed. <laughs> because, information because so people you, just hang up. That answer is, that answer is probably 80% of the calls that we get. Okay. Probably, that's probably a high number, but you know, how late are you open today? And and even though that message is there, people still will wait to talk to someone okay. and ask the same question. And so then the phone So rings it was set up to try and deter okay, so people from having to wait to talk to a body. Oh, it's it's incredibly... And it doesn't uh, actually ring in our office until after they get through that message. Yeah, which is you, so, and you I know, speaking and it's like a 10-page yeah. thing <clears> that you go through. Yeah, yeah. It's it wonderful. gives all of the election, <laughs> election oh, just, days. You, you, just you enjoy it. You just hang up. <laughs> I just hang up. I just hang up. It's like, okay, I don't have time for this. I send I you an email it. instead. Yeah. You know? I'm so, okay. Go Sonny, online. It has all the Sonny, you've been waiting so patiently. I've got a general question. The difference between union benefits, wages, and non-union benefit wages. 
Is there a different health care? That's not anything I handle, I so I, <coughs> I couldn't answer that question. No, Maybe no. Christy could. <coughs> well, we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about personnel and things, administration. Wouldn't it fall under that? Excuse me, David. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, being so, excused, on the end. okay, hold on, David. I'll get you. So, Sonny, we'll be we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Okay, that's not Jane's forte. Um, go ahead, please, David. It was brought up by Tim in a, in a way that positive way, and he was. I was going to ask you, and I'm going to get specific on it. <coughs> You're saying this role is a 35 hours, and it's going to be a union. Would you be open to it being a non-union and make it a full-time person? Then I'd be in favor of it. But some of the items that was Tim brought up, we can't go over 35 hours. I would think this person could help maybe on a Friday afternoon if they were there 40 hours. Would you be open this, to this person being a non-union? Yes um, or no? That's a two-part question. I can't answer it yes or no. Okay. Have them help out on Friday afternoon, having someone in the office by themselves? No, absolutely not. Um, I wouldn't have one person work, whole, work, working town, in the town afternoon. Hall cl close at five to all the time. No. There's other people in the building. No, no, but I'm saying to be in my office performing transactions, one person there by themselves does not work. It does not work. If there's phones to be answered. If there's a line of customers, one person there it doesn't. That doesn't help anything. It just. I mean, it might be open for those customers that want to come in on Friday afternoons. But I will tell you that in 2009, when I changed the office hours from 9 to 4.30, Monday through Friday is what they used to be, I had a lot of complaints from people wanting the office open earlier in the morning and later in the afternoon. And in order to accomplish that, I had to take those hours from somewhere, and that's where the Friday afternoon came in. I put an article in the newspaper and asked people for feedback. This is what I'm proposing. Tell me what you think. Give me your opinion. Give me suggestions, and I'll take it from there. I had nine people send me an email and eight of the nine were positive to that change. So that's why I made the change in 2009. So, and again, restricted by the number of hours that my employees can work, I had to take those hours from somewhere. So that's where the Friday afternoons came from. And then the tax collector shortly followed afterwards and so did the recreation department. So to be able to change their hours to give more hours throughout the week. Are they union too? Um, Mm -hmm. The tax collector's assistant is, or that her deputy is, and I believe the employees so in the recreation department are as well. Yep. Are you finished, David? Thank you. Is it so I'm sorry I couldn't give you a yes or no answer, but well, it wasn't quite no, that. It wasn't quite that simple. That was a very good answer. Okay. Is it safe to say that everybody in your department, other than yourself, is in the union? Everyone but the file clerk. Okay, which is just a, a little position. Okay, thank you. So I would I would imagine adding a new employee, um, that person's, you're not going to be able to do, you know, non-union type of thing. Right, because that person would technically be doing the same job as the as the union employees. Oh, and that's exactly. not That's so just I, not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Exactly. Okay, go ahead, Ginny. Okay, when the bookkeeper moves from bookkeeper to senior bookkeeper, there's no raise, is there? There is a raise, yes. Why is there a raise? That's included in that number that's proposed. Why is there a raise if she's not doing any different duties than she's doing now? Because she has, that gives her sen seniority, so that increases her. She, she and, seen, she not and that, wait a minute, the, the, the salary for the senior bookkeeper is determined in the contract. That position has a salary already set in the contract. Are her duties going to be any different, Jane? I will give her more duties, absolutely. So you're giving her a $9,000 raise to move the pipe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anything else, okay. Jenny? Unfortunately, it's my only way to try, uh, the, um, the only way I could come up with. I was yeah. trying to be creative yep. to make this happen. Yep. I'm kind of restricted as to how I can make it happen. So right. I actually, uh, last year or the year before, tried to put in just a hire a full-time assistant clerk under the part-time assistant clerks and, and change it, and it just it just blew up in my face. Nothing, it just didn't work. And two, I made I made several attempts at it. And so. two additional part-time wouldn't work. No, that does nothing for me because they can't work any extra hours. Okay. Okay. All set, Jenny. Yep. Okay, oh, Tim. Yeah, I just want to observe that uh, <clears throat> while this says recommended by the board of selectmen four zero. 
if you actually watched their vote, I, some number, I didn't count them, a number of selectmen said, they're just putting it out here. They're not offering an opinion. They just want the voters to decide. And so I'm not sure that they recommended 4-0 by the selectmen. Recommended 4-0 by the selectmen to put it on the ballot is accurate. Recommended for the voter to vote for it, 4-0 is not accurate based on what they said. So, um, so we're a number of selectmen took the neutral position. Am I not correct, uh, Re uh, Regina? Okay. I've so I voted to move this forward to the warrant. Right. And it ends up, it ends up, it ends up telling the voter, recommend, we recommend that you vote for it, as opposed to, you, you should have two votes, one that says put on the ballot, and the other one says whether, we, whether you recommend the voters vote for it or not. Uh, but well, that, that's never the way it's ever made, been done. I think so. we made it clear that we didn't want to put it in the budget because we wanted it to be its own item so the voters could decide. Right. So right. that's why we voted for zero. If we didn't do that, if it was in the budget, we probably would either have a zero four zero vote or a zero zero four vote. So that's why it's four zero. Right. I, I think it's, that it's more exactly. It should be. It's not misleading if you follow and ask or ask people why they've done something <coughs> or watch the meeting when we voted on it. It's not misleading at all. It certainly is misleading. When the selectmen vote, move a warrant article to the ballot. They vote to put the ballot to book, vote to put the article on the ballot with either selectmen recommend or selectmen don't recommend. I but recommend for the warrant for the voters to decide. I did not want to have it in the budget. So you're telling me that four out of zero selectmen want this article? That's what, I mean, when I said yes, that's what I meant. That's what okay. it says right here, so that's what we have to assume. So that they all recommend this article, that's what period. It, yes, that's, that would be a correct statement. Okay. okay. That's so. what any voter that sees this is going to interpret exactly, exactly that way. However, did. if you watch their vote, a number of them said... <laughs> Hey, I don't, I don't have an opinion on this, or I'm not taking a position on this. I'm simply voting to put it on the ballot so the voters can decide. Yes. Okay. okay. So what so we're going to do? I didn't count how many said it, and it wasn't just on this well, one. Well, I said it, I'm sure, but I said okay. I voted to move it to the warrant. All right, everybody. Hey. And that's what I'm making clear right. is that. Tim, stop, please. Okay. Stop. Now, do we have a motion on this warrant article to do anything with it to recommend it? Is there a motion? Yeah, I moved, moved it. A motion on I the moved floor. it to recommend it, and, uh, and I who believe second Regina seconded it. Second yeah. 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 Okay. Um, are we finished talking about yeah. this? No. Quick question. Go quick. ahead. Shouldn't we therefore, or can we, just change the wording at the bottom no. so it doesn't appear? We don't have the authority to change any words. No. Authority no. Okay. So the answer to that is no. The answer is All right. So go ahead, Regina. Mr. Town Manager. The Board of Selectmen have voted on this tally here to be just presented. One like article right. will show the Board of Selectmen recommends 4 0 that the, the article be adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Th those in favor of recommending this or an article, please raise your hand. We're voting right now. Okay. So we have, we have um, Mike Pluff, Steve LeBranch, Regina Barnes, Chuck Rage, and Sonny Kravitz. Those against? We have Ginny Bridal, uh, David, and also Tim Jones, and of course, no abstentions. Mr. Chairman, oh, thank you. I'd like the record to show that if there were a vote for me to put it on the ballot, I would vote to put it on the ballot. Oh, I would definitely. Yeah, but I wouldn't vote for the voters. The record, I wouldn't recommend that the voters vote it. For would you, Jenny? I wouldn't. No. No. Okay. Well, that's what we we just <laughs> did. Okay. So the just to be clear, three people decided not to. So uh, the the opposers are uh, Jenny and Dave David and, and, and Tim Jones. The rest Thank are you. yes. Okay, we're done. Thank, Thank you very much, Jane. You don't have any more warrant articles, do you, Jane? No, we're no. done with Jane. <laughs> the, the first one I notice every time when we do warrant articles, it seems like the first one is like <laughs> giving birth. You know, it takes a long time. But after that, that things kind of move along a little bit. <laughs> that was our first contraction. It's always the worst. <laughs> You know? well, okay, so good luck, Jane. Um, we're going to be talking about <laughs> executive now. Thank you, Jane. Have a good night, Mr. Executive. Chairman. Oh, yes, yes. May I move the executive for two hundred nine thousand two hundred thirty-two dollars. Okay, and that's on page page one, I believe. So, um, yeah, Mr. Welch, please, if we'll, we're going to have. Now the fun's going to start, okay? Yeah. So, gonna, it was uh, the second for that thing. I did. Okay. 
So. And the figure is 209232? Correct. Thank you. 309. Sorry. 309232. Thank you. Correct. Yes. My failing eyes. My apologies. Thank you, Chris. So we're going to start with the. Um, with the, uh, the selectmen, we've, we've got uh, it's zero, zero increase. So, I is there any discussion about the? Um, as a matter of fact, is there any discussion about any of this? You want to say anything, Mr. Town Manager? The total bottom line is zero point five five percent decrease from uh, this current year to next year. Okay, Tim, I have one thing here. Everybody, it's from uh, from the minutes recorder. Respectfully, this would be from Barbara. This would be regarding the budget committee's budget. Um, I request that the committee consider increasing my salary to $175 a meeting as requested last year. Anybody want to make a motion on that, David? Makes a motion to increase. Okay. Anybody want to second that so we can have I'll discussion? Second that. Ginny seconded it. Um, just for discussion purposes, I know, Sonny, that when these other budgets have come up and they're five and six percent, and you've had a, a speech for every one of those department heads that um, a five or six percent, and uh, there are so many people that. Living on fixed incomes and everything else. This is a 10% increase. Well, all, I, all I can add is I know how long it takes to write the minutes up. Yeah. Make sense out of it. Okay. This is a 10% increase. I just want to say that for the bottom line. Okay. So, anybody wish to um, speak about question. this? Go ahead. Sonny, how many hours are put into one? You're asking the wrong person, David. No, ask the, ask the, the recorder hours. secretary if you want to know that question, because you're not managing her. Answer, let Barbara, you Whatever. can answer that question yourself. It can take anywhere from 10 to 20 hours, depending. It's huge. Depending, for instance, the last set of minutes. Yeah. It, it is complicated, complex, it went around and around, and it has to be accurate. Point of so, order, Mr. Chairman. Yes. So it is. If we're, if we're going to be discussing. 20, 20 hours plus point of order, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely. Hold on, David. The point of order takes precedence. If we're going to be discussing individual performance, then by law we should be doing it in a non public session. I agree. And this is, this is not. Um, this, is, this has to do with personnel, and it. It should be discussed with, uh, for instance, in the HR office, with the HR uh, human resources person. No, no. Uh, it needs to be discussed in a non-public session. Of if, if, if the budget committee is or is not going to make an increase to an individual and discuss that individual's performance, right. that discussion of the individual performance must be non-public. Unless right. the person requests that it be in public. Correct. The person may request. But we have not received that request. It can be an all request or it can be a request. But we have not heard nor seen such a request. Okay. Do I hear an oral request from Barbara that this can be discussed? That's that your request? performance be discussed publicly? I have no problem. There you go. Okay. So thank you, Tim. So that's, that's a granting of it. Right? That was a very good point of order. David, did you have anything else you wanted to ask Barbara? No, what I was trying to do to understand that to get over the 10%. She's at times. This, she's putting into like 20, 20 hours plus. That's a lot of work for 20 hours if you're doing the other thing. Paying it's like $7, 6 bucks, $5 an hour. And your work is outstanding. So that's all. It seemed reasonable. And I wouldn't go down the 10% rule against Sonny. I think that's a low shot. Personal opinion. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry to say that I do not find the work outstanding. The minutes have been resubmitted with Did amendments. The same meeting multiple times. Uh, that's very unusual, extremely unusual. You that's not outstanding. Minutes, are you talking to me? Can I, can I respond? No, I'm speaking general. I'll look as, as you're I looking wish. at me like you talk. I'll look as I wish to look. And uh, furthermore, as as you know, Mr. Chairman. We instructed the recording secretary to generate bare bones minutes 
which meant who's attending, what motions are made, who voted on those motions, and that's it. That's all that's required legally. And that's what this committee, you, the chairman, directed at the beginning. Bare bones minutes. There's no reason that bare bones minutes should take 10 to 20 hours. All right? 10 to 20 minutes is more accurate. <laughs> the bottom line is we're getting voluminous minutes. They're quite the opposite of the direction that the chairman gave. And I do not consider doing the opposite of the direction the chairman made to be considered outstanding performance. And so, no, I do not support a 10% raise. I do not support a 0.1% raise. I do not support a raise of any kind. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Um, go ahead, Sonny. Yeah, you had your hand up first. I was going to raise with the demand from the municipal association. When somebody abstains from a vote on the record, <coughs> Tim usually abstains. Then he, an another meeting, he may, wants to amend it. If he hasn't voted, how can he amend it? That's. My understanding is you... Can we get back to the motion, to Mr. Chairman? Vote in order to amend okay, and that's... I'm not going to answer that, so... No, okay, I that's, realize. That's, you're just making a you. comment. Okay, thank you. Ginny, what the did you... The other thing I would suggest is let Tim mark the minutes. Okay, Ginny, go ahead. Do you know... It's very hard to get people to take minutes. There's ads in the paper all the time from clerks to take minutes because it's a thankless job because half the people like it and half the people hate it. And that's the way it is. So I think we have a clerk that does her job. She does the minutes on time. I think we should obviously consider the 10% price. Well, you know what, Jenny? I don't see that that... Okay, that's your opinion. Thank right. you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, in order? Okay. Well, hands keep going up around here. Regina, go ahead. What is the current? You 175 is what's being requested. What does she do? 150. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. And and I want to add that, um, just for the record, okay. Joan Rice, who happens to be convalescing right now, so a shout out to her. I hope she's feeling better soon. Um, just did the did the. She was the minutes recorder. We have to keep this title correct. You just mentioned clerk. Somebody else said recording secretary. It's the minutes recorder. That's the title, okay? And um, she did it for considerably less money than that. Like many, many. When I say considerably, I mean considerably. Like 90 bucks, I think. 95. Now, yeah. when, when Barbara offered to do this service last year, at the time she asked, $175. I was sitting, I think, where you are now, or David, and I said, I think $150 is more than enough. Um, and that was a jump from what we had been paying, okay? Um, I... That's, um, that's all I'm going to say. And then my vote will will reflect how the rest of it, how I feel. Go ahead, Chuck. Um, Joan Rice does our meeting. She does a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. She's going to continue to do our meetings. But our meetings are substantially less in time. Our meetings are anywhere from one to two hours. And these meetings go on and on and on and on, that's, that's which a good, they don't need to go on and on and on, but they do. That's a good point, and, Chuck. Uh, and, I, and I want to mention that when Joan was doing these minutes and prior chairman, not me, because these, are, these meetings end at 10 o'clock, whether we're in the middle of a sentence or not, um, but they used to go until 11 o'clock. So they're a three-hour meeting now. They used to be four, and one time it was even f uh, yeah. midnight at, and 12.30, and Joan was doing those minutes. It, those meetings were ridiculous, okay? And I, so point well uh, made about the time. I realized that Joan does the minutes for other – she does them for the school board as well, I yes. believe. Yeah. Yes, she does. So she does them for a number of different people. Um, but – Whatever the case, anybody else have anything to say? Uh, Sonny, go ahead. Yeah, oh, I've got one comment. If we, the Municipal Budget Committee gets into litigation at any point, the judge relies on the minutes, not the video. The video is not the official record, it's the minutes. That are, That's a good that point. Determine That's a good point, but I will, Tim made a point also, and that is that at the beginning of this, 
I specifically said I want minimum minutes. Okay, they originally <coughs> were substan They were just 12 pages of minutes, um, and way too much, way too much information. Um, if it's taking 20 hours, I would suggest that perhaps bringing it down to more bare bones of what I asked before. And if I remember correctly, and Fred, perhaps I've, I've talked to you about this. What is the requirement in the minutes? Because it's pretty minimal. Statutory requirements are that you must indicate who's in attendance. You must indicate who comes to meet with the board. You must indicate what the subject is, and you must indicate a vote if it's taken. That's it. Okay. That's all that really needs to be done. Okay. The, I realize the, you know, there's nine pages for one of our last meetings, I think. Um, yeah, nine, nine pages for our meeting on uh, Tuesday, December 5th. It's too much. It, it, you're, I, you're putting in too much work, Barbara. Okay, that's my opinion. And I would like to ask that you minimize it. Uh, David, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> I have taken notes many notes in the past where I worked. And I will tell you, it's very difficult to do when about four or five people, this are talking, because then this one jumps in, and then even the next person raises it right down. So what I would suggest is, if you want a minimum example, I think we need to give our secretary an example of a minimal, so we have a sample for it to follow. But the, as you're saying, it is nine pages because she's trying to add that level of detail. But we need to have a sample for her to understand. I think we should be able to come up with one. Maybe the, the town manager, what you just said, was pretty simple. That's but the sample. If that's the sample, that's we the should sample. have to put it in black and white and have a sample, and we'll, we'll go by that. To cut well, back around. That is the sample, what was just told by the town manager. It's set in okay. statute. Okay, that's the, that's the right. that's it. David. Black letter laws, yeah. it's called, right? right. They get you down like that's hours. the rumor. All right, uh, Tim, you had your hand up. Anything else to add? To for me, it's not the hour. It was said the minutes are done on what time. It does for the town, for the for here. And it's up to you, if you know. The minutes are not done on time. They're not. Five days, five business days, for a draft. Today. At 4.45, <coughs> we received the minutes for December 5th. Today is December 14th. Point and of not order. on time. Good. Hold on, Tim. Point of order. Just for the record, okay, you can show this in the record. The minutes were sent to me late yesterday afternoon. Tuesday. And I was in another meeting. Okay. No, I didn't get them Tuesday. I got them, I got them Wednesday. Okay? It's so, Tuesday. And I was in a meeting with the village district. Okay. So that's why I, of course, the town office is closed, um, and that's why I sent them today to Christina to distribute to the group. <coughs> okay, so well, I don't care whose fault it is. The fact is, the law says five business days, and that didn't happen. Okay, <coughs> and even more over than that, because we had a meeting two days later on the seventh. We don't have minutes for that. And just to explain at that, all, Tim. That I see. No, just to explain that. And you're right, we don't. Barbara approached me before this meeting started, and she had a printer problem. So she printed out a document that was um, had it wasn't it wasn't complete. I gave that to Mr. Welch, so that he can please give it to Christina, his assistant tomorrow but you're right it's we're cutting this very close mr okay. chairman can you explain to me why you need a printer to send an email that's a good question maybe you could ask the person that, that because was, it's, that was, was the, the point i'm I making is is that a, a broken printer has got nothing to do with the process that's a point that if you wanted to ask so the minutes are not on time and the quality is something I don't want to get into because I can go through the, the most recent December 5th minutes and, and see discombobulations all over the place. Well, you had problems with the previous secretary. No, well, no, no, no. Yeah. Let me say it right now clearly. That's why Joe... Right, let me say it right now that. clearly. Just because I say that, you know, that this could be corrected, that could be corrected, doesn't mean I don't consider that work quality work. Joan Rice 
does outstanding work when she was on the budget committee. She does outstanding work for the village district, and she does outstanding work for the school board. Mm -hmm. All right, let me be totally clear on that. The fact that I had revisions or suggestions has got nothing to do with the reflection of me thinking it was poor quality work because it wasn't. And I made that clear in the letter to the editor when people were confused about that years ago. So let's not be painting me with a brush that was an incorrect brush to begin with. Can we get finished? The point is, is that the 12 five minutes, if you read them, you will find comments way off bounds. One topic is being discussed and another topic is being described. That's not quality. Okay, can we get done? You're talking about Hold on, don't, Sonny, don't be just talking about Are you? I haven't recognized you. Are you finished, if, Tim? I'm only going to go into the particulars of it if, if, if people want to challenge me on that statement, but that's my statement. Thank you, Tim. Um, Sonny. I would suggest we find out from the Municipal Association which, if there's a legal matter that involves a budget committee, whether they rely on the minutes or the video. They don't rely on the video. They re it's the minutes that make the decision for the judge. Fred, you're shaking your head. No, that's not true. Okay, that's the not cases true, we sorry. have, they rely upon both. Right. We just finished the case, which is now before the Supreme Court. The Superior Court ruled after reviewing the video. All of the ZBA cases, a video must be provided. So that's not true. They do review the videos because they have the entire meeting on the video. Right. Thank you for that clarification. So now we know what the answer is to that. Are we finished talking about this? I hope so. Uh, seeing no more hands, um, we can vote on this now. All those in favor of increasing that by uh, to 175. Who made that motion? I did. I seconded it. Okay, David made the motion and Ginny seconded it. Um, all those in favor, raise your hands. We have David, Ginny, and Sonny. All those opposed? Um, we have Chuck, Regina, myself, Stephen LeBranch, uh, Mike Plouffe, and Tim Jones. Okay, thank you very much. So, any other questions from anybody regarding this, um, what we're looking at, which is the executive? It's the selectmen, the town manager, the budget committee, and the trustees of the trust fund. Mr. Chairman, go ahead. The um Salaries for the uh, manager and town manager are exactly where here? Right under town manager, right? Regular wages? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay. And uh, your recent contracts that were executed uh, with Board Selectman, uh, are the numbers in those contracts reflected here? Yes. But yet there seems to be a decrease of 0.64%. So you guys take a pay cut in those contracts? Yeah, we took a pay cut of 0.64%. No kidding. Finance. Uh, looks at the wages that are there, computes them against the number of payroll payrolls for the year, and uh, verifies the actual sum that needs to be paid based upon the rate that's approved by the selectmen. So your contracts actually calls for a well. Some some years have fifty four. Christy, would you? I, th I believe in the two thousand and seventeen budget. I don't did not bring it down with me, but I believe that there was a increase in the budget for the town manager and the assistant town manager. It was either two or three. And we won't be quoted because I can't remember, but okay. it was higher than what they were issued. They were issued 1.65%. In the contracts that they have, the pay rate in that contract is exactly what the Board of Selectmen had already authorized back in like June or July. There was no other pay increase in their contracts. Oh, was it last year 10%? Thank you, Chris. <coughs> Thank you. Can, you, can you explain then why uh, the subline item of regular wages is down? It should be flat based on what I'm hearing from you. No, it shouldn't be flat. In the 2017 budget, the Board of Selectmen put in the 2017 budget. Do you remember if it I was, think it was two or three each? I think right? it was three yeah. each. Yeah. And in 2017, the Board of Selectmen chose to only give 1.65. They did not give them the whole 3%. Right. That is why it's down in the okay. 18. So we had an appropriation for 3% yes. and the actual disbursement of 1.65%. Yes. yes. Okay. For each of them. Okay. Thank you, Christy. Okay. Okay. Um, um, Tim, continue. Thank you. 
just going to quickly make a reference here. But I wanted to ask you, Fred, or Regina, either one, there was some discussion at the Board of Selectmen about uh, adjusting the, uh, the salary for the Selectmen. Uh, can, can you enlighten me as to where that is? It's not adjusted. Yeah. I know it's not adjusted, but I can see that it's not adjusted. But uh, is there consideration being made, or has it just been tabled, or...? There was no motion to change that. Right. There was a discussion that a number of years ago it was decreased. But the selectmen did not make a motion to increase it or to change it in any way. Mm -hmm. So they left it flat. I find, you know, I, I was I was aware of they were being paid thirty five hundred about twenty years ago, and they took a cut because of partly because the unions were not getting any increases, and the board of selectmen was showing a, some a symbolic gesture of. Uh, Solidarity with them, so they went from thirty-five hundred to three thousand, where it has remained uh, through all of these couple decades now. And uh, I am concerned because I see last year we had uh, an election with no competition for the board of selectmen. They do they do a lot of work. Uh, whether you like their work or not is not the issue. The personalities at play are not the issue in my mind. What's at my mind is we expect them to do a certain amount of work. We voters, we citizens, expect them to do a certain amount of work. And that $3,000 that we're paying them, in my opinion, does not reflect the expectation we have of them for the amount of work they do. I mean, they, they, uh, there's one former selectman who complains that they don't meet every week. They meet almost every week. <laughs> And, and at the rate of that, if you just divide that up by the $3,000, they're making pennies. And the fact that we're not getting, in my opinion, again, a uh, sufficient number of people uh, stepping forward and joining government uh, really puts our entire town government as a town government at serious risk. Uh, we don't have competition for the budget committee. We don't have competition for the planning board. We don't have competition at elections for the board of selectmen. We don't have a competition of ideas. And when you don't have a competition of ideas, what you end up is basically having less than optimum ideas. Basically bad ideas too often. So I'm very concerned. I think maybe we ought to consider raising the Board of Selectmen's pay. And speaking more broadly, I think we need to be considering raising the pay of other elected officials as well. Since we already have in this budget pay raises for elected officials, uh, I would say that <clears throat> it makes sense to me that the elected officials who have been ignored for years, uh, not getting increments or anything at all, ought to be given consideration this year, along with those who were already given consideration. We shouldn't be you know, taking just this one and that one and, and ignoring everybody else. One so I would, I would uh, request that... Uh, uh, we asked the finance director to provide an analysis of uh, total costs associated. I'm just throwing these numbers out so we have something to work with in our final review. But my intent is to consider giving, giving a pay increments. Uh, and, and I would say if the finance director could provide us with a cost analysis of increasing the, uh, uh, paying the Board of Selectmen a salary of $5,000 versus the 3000 currently. Um, and also for all elected officials who presently are unpaid, they receive zero, that there ought to be an allocation of, uh, for a, an expense account slash stipend of $1,000 per official. So they will not be on the payroll. Um, and I also think the moderator, who has not received the pay raise in well over 20 years, even though, according to Jane, he doesn't necessarily want it. If he doesn't want it, he can give it to charity or simply not accept it if he doesn't. But he, right now he's being paid $1,000. Hasn't been increased for over 20 years. We got to bring that to $2,000. So if we, we can get that uh, analysis, cost analysis from Christy, Mr. Chairman, I would appreciate that. I think it would give us some more information uh, for our final review. Christy, is that something you can do? Yeah, just for clarification, so the Board of Selectmen would be handled the same way that they are now through payroll. So yes. the taxes that are involved with that. And then for other board members, you're looking for $1,000 per 
per seat, so to speak, even per, per person. Per person, and that would just be a stipend, not to the table. Well, it'd be an expense. It'd be an expense account, and if they don't exhaust the full thousand in a year, they they can optionally take the balance as a stipend. Okay. So it would not be a payroll. Yeah. Not a payroll. Not a payroll. So they would get a ten ninety nine. Yeah, if they were taking a stipend, yeah. Well, if they just to expand on that a little bit, um, so you're saying expenses, for instance, would be like mileage yeah. type of thing, or. I don't know, whatever you... They, they, they may go up to an HMA meeting, you know, a training session or something like that. They, they, they pay would get on their paid own. For, they thing. would get paid for mileage. And, 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 as well as the cost of the, the, the trip, essentially, yeah. Okay. There are and a variety of things that we do. Driving around town looking at sites. and I mean, how I many Steve, you and I have personally gone up together and looked at sites investigating warrant articles. So. Uh, that's true. Kind of information. Okay, hold Go ahead, uh, Sonny. State reps get $100 a year. Plus expenses. Oh, they get free tolls. No, they get full expense account, unlimited. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, I get it. I get it. Okay, Jenny's first. Is there a majority of this board right now that wants this? He didn't make a motion. He's asking for what was it? Just a cost analysis. analysis. So, so I'm just using these numbers not making as a baseline a to work with. Or maybe you are making a motion. No, just no. just as as before, we request information through the chair. And the chair simply passes it on to the appropriate personnel. Do you understand, Christy? The basically what he's asking. Yes. Okay. Do you want to clarify all the board members you're referring to? Or you want planning board? Well, I'm hoping your analysis will committee? bring it to light. But basically, what readily comes to mind is the budget committee. We have six, right? And uh, planning board has what? Seven, Fred? Maybe five. I'm not five. sure. Five. Zoning board. And zoning board has five. Five. Right. Uh, Conservation. Conservation is not elected. So you're looking for elected board members. Correct. Got it. There's your clarification yeah. right there. Okay. Do not do it for the school board, Tim, because... I'm not. This is just for okay. the town. Because you said you were moving it on. No, no, no. no and no. I'm going to say that the, the school board has... The school board, I'm let them to make their decision. Okay. And when we're dealing with SAU 90, if, it, if the idea comes up, then the idea comes up. But I have no expectation. The, that idea, the idea has come up and has been presented to the school board every year, and we wanted the building. And in order to get that building, we cut down the Warren articles and the budget at 0%. So that we could I get have a bill. No intention of making. So I'm any just telling you that. So the we have we point. have we have we have charge of the town budget, the SAU 90 budget, and the village district budget. Right. I have no intention of making a similar request for information from the village district, nor from the SAU 90. Okay. Okay. Yep. This is just for the town. Okay. Right. This is the town government's health that I'm concerned with. If we don't get more people actively involved, this town is going to, as a town government, will deteriorate into something. Much less desirable than a town government. Okay, thank you, Tim. Are you done? Yes. I hope so. yeah, David, go ahead. Quick question. Yes. Hopefully, quick. I thought the selectman salary was fifteen thousand dollars a year. Hell no. No, no. That's divided by five. Five, five divided people. by five. They get yeah, three thousand yes. a year. I, okay. I had heard from people it was fifteen thousand per person. No, no. no. Far Should from. Be. Of course, you have. Far from it. Far from it. Okay. okay, so anything else on this? Anything else here? We have a motion and we have a second. It wasn't a motion. It was simply a request for information. No, 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 for you. But anything else about this? We're just to move, move forward a little bit. The executive? The oh, right. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, Any, yes, I do, actually. Um, Moa? Yeah. Okay, let's wrap this up because we've got other things to finish up here. Tonight. I began reading the, um, the contracts, Fred. Um, and I noticed there's a bill out there pending, uh, HB 561, are you familiar with it? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't believe that, what's the matter, Chuck? Well, right now the law says that if you take a pension, help me if I'm wrong, Fred, tell me if I'm wrong. If you take a pension from the New Hampshire retirement system, then you can only work for a government entity for a maximum of 32 hours a week. Is that accurate? That's the way it is now. Somewhat accurate. Okay. Help me out. <laughs> I need help all the time. There are specific employees and officials and, and, and so Tom on and so forth are exempt. who are excluded from that Tom by Andrews, statute. Right. Yeah. Tom managers are exempt. Correct. Right. Um, but uh, H H B 561 is going to change that hour count from 32 to 20, I believe, right? That's that's in the bill pending to be voted on in December in January. Right. So, uh, 
I'm concerned there was no mention because I saw it in contracts related to change in that law. I mean, it did, the contracts did mention the law. The proposed so statute. We could be paying, uh, say, the assistant town manager, uh, what is it, 80 plus thousand dollars. Right now we're paying them for 32 hours worth of work. If HB 561 passes, by contract, we'll did be paying read, them. 80 did you read the entire act? I have not, no. Okay, well, so if you read out. the entire act, you will find that there is an exclusion in there for existing contracts. Grandfathered. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's that's the essence of my question. Thank you, Fred. Okay. So, get to the, the bottom line. I appreciate that. I'm, so, I'm done, I hope. You're done. Okay. Sonny, make it quick. Make it quick? Yes. We, we, because question. we have other things to do I tonight, have a question Sonny. question on the outside council. You got it's not, it's not three, topical. Three cases. We're not on that budget. Mr. Chairman, point of order. Well, it's on, it's in the Sonny, way. we're not talking about that right now. Okay. Well, okay. Any to... any further conversation on this? <laughs> okay. We're going to vote right now. Those in favor, raise your hand. And it's Almost everybody ready. except it, those not in favor. And Sonny's abstaining. So you have one abstention. One abstention, and then the others have voted yes. <coughs> Who made the motion? Was it David? David made the motion. Jenny seconded it. Your turn. Okay, we're going to move on to uh, finance, which is on page five. No, oh, this is the this is the biggie. This is the, wait a minute. Go ahead, Tim. You're going to make a motion if you'd like. I wish you would. You can add it up yourself. No, I wish okay. you would make a motion. Go ahead. Help me out, Christy. If I can make sure to get this right, three hundred nine thousand two hundred thirty-two dollars for financial administration. Let me get to the page. Account number four one five zero. Three. Did you All say right, three, so seven, <laughs> three seven four? Are three. you doing financial administration as a whole, with That's including correct. assessing and all that? Yeah. It's one financial administration four one five zero is one million twenty nine thousand three hundred ninety eight dollars. Okay. Why is my what does my book because say? Because he. Okay. Mr. Jones is following the DRA form, which that's includes exactly assessing, right. tax collector, yeah. audit. Oh, that's right. right. From the other from the other night, I yes. forgot. Okay, from last week, we never actually did a motion. The finance department. Yeah. Hold on, Christy. Is three hundred seventy-four thousand. Yeah. Okay. But so go ahead, Tim. Um, yes, he's correct. I just want to remind everyone that we already uh, discussed. Assessing and tax collecting, which is part of financial administration. Correct. And what's remaining is uh, finance department, audit, and MIS. That's exactly right. And we'll be doing those. We'll do the finance. So I was just saying that we'll the do the audit. All those departments. That's, you want the grand total? And then we'll yeah, because we have to pass yeah. the grand total. And right? then we'll do the MIS. We have to pass the line item. Okay. One million twenty nine thousand three hundred ninety eight dollars. Thank you. Because I, I don't believe you made any adjustments to any of those other departments the other night. So. No, we did not. So. Okay. Well, we did discuss them. And I just want to make. All right. Clear. Does anybody have any questions for Christy about what's on page five, which is the financial administration and also the audit services? Seeing none. Well, I'd like. Christy to speak a little bit about her budget. Oh, okay, go ahead, Christy. Okay. Um, there's part-time wages is down slightly, and that is a reflection of in the 2017 budget, I had two employees out on FMLA at different times, and so we had brought in some part-time help. So that is the reflection there. Let's see what it is. Let me go down with my ruler here. Uh, the elected officials' wages, that would be the town treasurer, is up 2% for a pay increase that's in there. OT wages is increased based on uh, run rate averages, uh, OT time in the department to get ready for audit, and if there are people out on leave, then some of the full-timers end up having to work extra hours to pick up some of the slack because the part-time that comes in to fill the 40 hours can only work 28. Okay. So that's what some of that OT, 
over time is. And let's see what else we have for changes here. Equipment maintenance. Equipment maintenance is up 1.77%. And I believe, let me go over here and see. <laughs> That's the software service agreement is up slightly from 2017 for our, our financial software that we use is under that line item. And then we have, what else is up? I pay so much attention to everyone else's stuff. So I know, supplies see. and expenses. Supplies and expenses is up 4%. Four. Just to be more, I mean, there's nothing new in there. I think it, I just put in an amount that was Closer to what was actually being spent on those on that line. There's not. There's. It's just office supplies. It's pretty standard in there. And then um, I've lowered the bank service charges because if you see last year we at 2016 we were at 34,000. Um, this year so far, as of the end of September, we were only at 23,000. So I felt like we could cut that down based on the run rate of the bank service charges. Mm -hmm and brings us down to an overall decrease of 2.28 percent for the yeah, finance minus, office right I minus 2.28 okay we'll refer and, then, to it. and then your audit services audit services is a three-year contract okay thank I you i think it's up much. slightly up um, slightly yeah and if you look at the run rate for 2017 it's low because we didn't end up having a single audit and that 23,000 that you see there was only um, the first payment we have since made another payment, and I don't have that with me, but we're going to come in a little slightly under budget on that. Thank you very much, Christy. Any questions for Christy in this section, Jim? Yeah. Could you take a look at page 11? Page 11. Under the MIS tab for those who are tabbing away. So we're on MIS? Yeah, Wait. see what it says? See what it says? Total financial administration? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. That's a slightly different number than what we just moved on, so. Um, uh, That's because the, the detail page has always have reflected exactly what was requested. I believe if you look back, the tax collector had a higher increase than what the Board of Selectmen moved forward to you. The number I gave you was the amount that the Board of Selectmen moved forward, which is on your summary sheet in the so front. So what did you originally propose for the tax collector's pay rate? I didn't originally propose anything. She proposed something of, let's see here. But you fill out this budget and give it to the uh, Selectmen, right? Hey, but I don't make up the request. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I picture it was 3%. So the tax collector had originally had in, for herself, she had had in $59,391, and the Board of Selectmen brought it back to the 2% that they right. did right. for well, all. Let me guess. She was asking for a 3%. Three, and then it I went believe to it was two. Three. And you put I it in. Go look at tax. And you put it in, and the Selectmen took it out, to, took it down to 2%, right? right? Just like the right. uh, clerk. Right. right, and that's what changed same, that same thing, on, right? on page I 11. put in what the individual department Request. had to give to So that was your motivation for putting in there. The town yeah, treasurer I asked the, for it. If I don't pick the percentages across the board of who to put in for what percentage. No, but the answer is you, it, you put it in there because the town treasurer asked for it. All right? The town that's treasurer? Fine. Or the tax collector? Excuse me, the tax collector. Sorry. <laughs> Jim, you're getting confused here. I'm Sorry, getting old. It's just that simple. <laughs> slow down. Slow down. So in any case, it explains why that figure is different on it page says town 11. treasurer right here on page 5. I thought you were on page 11. Page and then 11. No, I was looking at page 11 asked, only for the total. I mentioned the tax collector. I didn't mention the treasurer. I mentioned the treasurer when I was talking about mine. Yes, there is a yeah. pay increase in there for the treasurer. <laughs> Of 2%, I mentioned that a second ago. When All I right. Was doing hold on. to sing the song, turn the page. Sorry. Oh, hold on, Tim. Tim. Let's finish one thing at a time. You're jumping all over the place here. Anybody have any questions about what's on page six, which is the financial administration and the audit services? Yes, I'm talking about page five, which is part oh, of page okay. six. Well, you, we're talking about page And that's why five. I'm talking town treasurer. Okay. Well, you skipped to the page 11. You went to 11. 11 I always yeah. said, yeah, I only wanted to reference the total. Okay. <laughs> the treasurer has it. I put in an increase for her for 2%, yes. You put it in, and it wasn't changed. It was not changed because it was two percent. Okay. Thank you. That was really mm -hmm. simple, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's all I have. Well, thank you very for much. That page. Thank you. Um, okay, that takes care of that page. So now we're going to move on to. Uh, we've done audit, and we've done. MIS uh, now. We're going to do MIS now, and that is on page ten. Okay. 
And then that will have... The MIS is Management Information Systems. Yes. It's $227,428. And I can just run through the different increases and decreases here. The 6% in regular wages is a result of pay adjustments were, that were in the 2017 budget. There's nothing new in here. It is up 6%, yes, but that is something that was in the 17 budget and approved when the budget was approved. So there's no additional money there. I mean, there's additional money there, but it's something that was already approved. Um, the next thing, if you look down under supplies and expense, no, let's see. The next one that's up is computer support. Right. It's up 19.65%. Right. Just, um, just under $4,000. And let's see here, computer support if you, it, it is all of the different, um, licensing and things that the department has and there's just been some increases across there i believe the internet has gone up um comcast i think is the same but just basically some of it, it lists out all of them on page 10 if you want to see exactly what they are but that four thousand dollars is in regards to licensing maintenance contracts things like that that's where that increase is for that item uh let's see Replacement, Replacement equipment. equipment is up 20.19% or roughly $7,000, just under $7,000. A couple years back, I think this will be our third year that we came up with an actual um, list of all of our computers and servers and came up with a five-year rotation plan for all of the, those pieces of equipment. And so... Last year, we broke them down into different uh, cat three different categories based on the user. So we have like a basic user, a little bit advanced, and then an intermediate type of user. And all of the users um, fall into a category. And on the replacement schedule, depending on which category you need to replace, it could be more money for the next year. So um, in 2017, we were replacing it, for the five years, it was more of the lower end users, and then in uh, 2018, we have some more high, higher end users in there. So it's about the same, roughly the same number of computers and servers and stuff, but they're just different user types. So just trying to be more accurate in what we're doing there. And then the motor vehicle allowance is down 40% uh, or about, let's see, $400. $400. And that's literally just because it wasn't being used. Okay. So I looked at the run rate and cut it based on the run rate. If you're not going to use it, then we kind of have been in the thing. Don't leave it in the budget if it's not being exhausted. So that was adjusted just based on the fact that it wasn't being used. Thank you very much, Christy. Mm -hmm. Anybody have questions for Christy? Tim? <coughs> for uh, this particular thing, page 11. Tim? Go ahead. It's 10 and 11 on the detail part. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, 10 and 11. Yeah. Thank you for correcting me. Go ahead, Tim. 6% uh, on the regular wage increase? Yes. Uh, did each employee get 6%? Uh, no, I believe that they each <coughs> got, I should have brought the 17 budget with me. <coughs> um, they may have each gotten 6 I can't remember what they had had before. I didn't bring last year's budget with me, but it was in the budget for last year. It was clearly marked on the merit line. If I don't know if you have the 2017 uh, budget with you. That line, subline, is uh, up 6.01 percent. Yes. And it reflects regular wages for two employees. Yes. So two employees shared a 6.01 percent increase. Yes. Right. Did they share it equally? I guess is another way of phrasing. They the did share it equally. Oh, I do know that. You. Yes. So they each I kind of feel like it was in the four percent range, to be honest with you, but I don't recall for sure. I'd have to look at the um, seventeen budget. The supplies and expenses up six nineteen point six five percent, call twenty yes. percent. You spoke to that briefly. Um, I noticed that the biggest sub sub line item in that is actually uh, five thousand dollars for wiring supplies. Under supplies and, supplies and expenses. Yeah. Supplies and expenses. Okay. okay. I, I, I don't quite understand. Are we doing uh, our own wiring now? They've always done their own wiring. 
I mean, not wiring, like dropping like Comcast or fiber or anything, but they do all the wiring, all the buildings. And if they are moving equipment around, just last week at Public Works, um, the new operations assistant, I believe is the title, wanted to move her desk around. So they went and climbed up in the ceiling and dropped the wires down. And yeah. so, yes, they I do. I mean, do that's, all that's that. rather small wiring stuff. I mean, 5,000 seems to be well, what was rather high. Year? I cannot like see, I, said, I, don't have the I can't budget. see these from these numbers. What's causing or what's driving this 20% increase on the subline item? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just looking at the biggest number and saying, oh, it's wiring supplies is the biggest number. I don't know that it's the biggest increase. Yeah. Uh, and I guess you don't either. So but supplies and expenses. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, supplies, supplies and expenses. Supplies and expenses has a 0% increase am I, am I as far reading as the wrong I line? Can computer see. support. Okay, sorry. Oh, computer support. Yeah, okay. and you're saying that's all licensing related? Yes. Okay. And there's been some increases. I know that I can grab some of my backup, but I know that um, the website, the HamptonNH.gov, increased um, from what it was last year. The f I believe, let's see here, I think the other, or the Town Hall Firewall. Um, well, the town website is um, hosted in that room right there, right? Yes, but you have to pay for the um, HamptonNH.gov. The name? That's like twenty dollars a year. Let me grab my backup before I speak because I have all of it in backup. I don't know. Mr. Chairman, after we get done with uh, finance, we're going to move right to the warrant article with the technology upgrade. No, we're going to go. We're going to finish this list. And then we'll go on to these warrant articles. Okay. okay. Let's see. Yeah, see, this has got Computer Hampton support. NH. This one's got Hampton NH Gov. Yeah, it's actually that was four hundred last year too. So four hundred doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, anybody can buy an internet domain for twenty bucks a year, twenty five bucks tops. So it's not the name itself that. that I think it's licensing with it or something. Along license those for lines. what? You were using freeware uh, for years and years and years. I don't believe changed. we're using freeware anymore. We are not using freeware. They. We're using BSD uh, Linux. Yeah, we're not. Where you? Um, we're not using freeware anymore. I do know that it's four hundred dollars. I have the invoice right here, actually, for that. Mr. Chairman, if you would authorize me to look into this offline with Christy, and if Christy would assent to that uh, offline, so we can move on. I don't want to bore the committee with all these details. Um, okay, but Tim, if you do that offline, then I would. If I find the need to adjust, I'll do it in final review. I would require a request that you uh, make notes so of that course. you can come back to this board and tell us, give the conclusions. Sure. How's that sound? Absolutely. Okay. Is that okay with you, Christy? Sure. Okay, that, that sounds like a good so idea. That, that'll, okay. that'll, I so, know this stuff can get boring to people who aren't into it. Well, it just happens that I'm into it. So I know. Yeah. Well, there are some of us here into that. Um, okay, is that it from you, Tim, regarding this uh, MIS? Yeah. Uh, well, other than one question, uh, the, you, you did you do have a warrant article for a technology upgrade. Did that have any the existence of this warrant article? Did it had any influence on the creation of your budget? No. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? So, what we're going to do now is we're going to move that one million dollar. <coughs> figure that um, total financial administration 4150 and the number again Christy was one million okay one million twenty nine thousand three hundred and ninety eight dollars three ninety eight okay all right Barbara did you get the um, that number 
have the number. Okay. Who made the motion? Tim. Tim uh, made the motion, and Regina, you seconded it. Sure. Yeah. It's one million, million twenty nine three nine eight. What? Twenty nine thousand. I might have. I don't know. Barbara, did you write down who took, took, made the motion and seconded it? Um, the motion was made by Tim. Tim, okay. The second? By Regina. Regina. Okay. All right. All those in favor, raise your hand, please. And it's unanimous of those present. You might want to note that Tim isn't present. He, he said, said he, he would vote. vote. Yes. He said he was. Well, we can't do it that way. Yeah. You know, I can't do it. That, uh, he's got to be here to vote. Right. All right. So now we're going to move on to uh, personal administration, page thirteen, please. It's the committee's choice when we get to personal administration, but if we vote on this total tonight, it will be changing because you've are, you made a change earlier to a wage line, and any time a change is made to a wage line, it change. directly affects this section. So we can go through the section, because there are other items in here to talk mm -hmm. about. There's the merit line that Jenny had asked about before. Okay. Um, but I wouldn't recommend that you move this number forward at this time, because you're going to have to amend it anyway at well, a later date. So that's up to that's, you guys. No, let's let's move the number that we have okay. that's on the piece of paper, and then when you come back for the adjustment, we can change it when we do our final review, okay? okay. Just so that we're moving forward here. Um, do I have a motion on the personal administration, 4155? Is that uh, Mike Plouffe? Yeah. Okay, and seconded by Regina. Okay, 3 million, $349,428, Barbara. Three three four nine four two eight. Okay. All right. Christy, would you like to uh, go down the list and please? So, employee separation cost is uh, 0%. Um, the sick leave buyback program, I <coughs> increased that to 200000 So that's a 5.26% increase. It's literally just based on the use. We're seeing more use of that. You can see that's a one-time payout in January. So the $204,411 that you see as of 9-30-17, that number hasn't changed. So in 17, we were over budget there. And I project that we will be at that same spot next year. We have the same uh, individuals. We haven't lost any of the employees who participate in that. Uh, the merit pay raises actually went down to down a negative 12.46 percent i look here i think that we put in two percent i think the board yeah we were instructed by the board so that's two percent for all new all non-union positions with the exclusion of the town manager and the assistant town manager they're not included in that line um and then we have Social Security, Medicare, and all of the retirement ones there are literally based on whatever wages are in the budget. It's strictly a calculation. If there's 100000 for Group 1 retirees, it's 100000 times 11.38%. You know, So that's just a flat number based on whatever wages are put into the budget. So those are the lines that could possibly change. Okay. based on um, changes that are made. Here right, and when level. they do, just yeah. let us know and we'll make the adjustment, okay? So that so. is personal administration. Thank you, you very much. Any questions for Christy on personal? David. Can you help me, Christy? Yes. And I know to try to explain it, David, but the policeman and the fireman yes. are both, one's up 1175. Are these all contractual and you That's the New Hampshire retirement, that? retirement, and the percentages went up July 1st. Yeah. And then the wages did go up for the fire contract because the fire yeah. contract passed. It was eight times the equal C. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The rate, uh, rates went up. <coughs> I think they're at 29.43 and. Um, they went up July 1 of 17, the rates for retirement did. But then there were pay increases also, so when, and it's directly related to wages like I had stated. So right. with any pay increases then, and then the also having the increase in the retirement rates, they compounded each other and 
Do they explain or do they just tell you what the retirement rates are? Oh, they just tell you. They just send it out. It's every two years now at least, though. It's, they don't change them every year anymore. I mean, I guess they could change that, but as of right now, it's every two years. Okay, thank you, Christy. All set, David? Yes, I am. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, no? Seeing none? We'll vote on this. <clears throat> Personal administration, all those in favor, raise your hands. And it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Christy. All right, so... We're going to talk about insurance now, which is on page 18. Please. Okay. So um, I'm going to propose some cuts here for you, but the budget in front of you right now is $3,518,690. That covers uh, the liability and general insurance for the town, the health insurance, the life insurance, unemployment, um, Workers' compensation and then the NHMA dues are in there also. Mm -hmm. The uh, dues okay. for NHMA, I'm going backwards this time, but <laughs> those are just what the, they're predicting the dues will be next year. So it's $17,904, so it's up about $900 from 2017. Mm -hmm. Then when this budget was put together, we had not re yet received the uh, rates for our liability and general insurance and our workers' compensation. We have since received those rates. So if it is the desire of the committee, I have two deductions that can be made there. Yes, please. Um, one is for $51,581. And that one is related to the workers' compensation. Okay. And then... $38,084 decrease for the property liability insurance. So those rates actually went down. And like I said, I didn't have, I just got those in November. So we didn't have those at the time that it, the budget was created or when it was at the Board of Selectmen level. So, so how does that change that bottom line, it Christine? It brings the bottom line to $3,429,025. Okay. Did you get that, Barbara? Three. Yeah. Four two nine zero two five, and instead of a minus eight point three three, it's going to be even more of a minus. Yes. Correct? I didn't calculate okay, that. Okay, that's all right. But it, it will be more. Obviously, yeah. a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Okay, it could be as much as nine percent. Anybody have any questions about this for Christie? Seeing none, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Excuse now me, we're can going. Can I have the maker of that motion, please? Uh, yeah. This okay. guy made the motion, and Regina seconded it. So Mike threw it. All right, now we're going to go right on to, uh, we, we just finished insurance, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to do debt service. That's on page 64. Okay, Everybody. Can I have another cut here, too? All right. Okay, All right, would somebody like to make a motion? Sure. Okay, Mike Cliff's making the motion. Second. Second by Regina for two million. Five hundred and forty-three thousand two three nine. That's for uh, again two five. I'm sorry, two five four three two three nine. That's what we have in the book. And Christy, you have an adjustment for us. Yes. Um, if you look at your detail there, you'll see that when this budget was created, <coughs> we plan to bond uh, the Lafayette Road sewer project with the June bond sale. However, that didn't happen, so it ended up being bonded with the January sale. So we're only going to have an interest payment in uh, um, 2018 okay. for that. So how does that change the line? It changes the line to two million four hundred and thirty four thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. Nine hundred and ninety nine. Okay, yeah. Mike, would you like to make an? And I just got that confirmed from from okay. bonding today. Thank you very so much. Yeah. You want to here. adjust your figure, Mike? Yep. Okay. So the new figure, Barbara, is two four three four nine nine nine. Okay, anybody have any questions for Christy regarding uh, debt service? What's the category? It's debt service. Debt service. Municipal debt <coughs> service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, seeing none, those uh, in favor, raise your hands, please. Okay, Unanimous, thank you very much. Okay, we're going to do other safety services on page 42, please. Back and forth here. There we go. Yeah. All right. So, 
Would somebody like to make a motion for other safety services, line 4299, please? I'll make the motion. Chuck made the motion. Second. second. Um, okay, we'll let David second yeah. that one. So Chuck Rage made the motion. David seconded it. And we have a total. Oh, okay. Let me see here. It includes hydrants, street lighting, and. <coughs> street lighting is a different number. Street, street lighting, lighting is 4316. Oh, so you're right. Okay. To follow the DRA form, you would want to just. Do it for the forty-two ninety-nine. I'm sorry, yeah. you're absolutely right. Okay, so we have the number uh, for Barbara is four eight three one six two, and that's down <coughs> negative point two one percent, just right. based on what the actual bill was. That's okay. all I did there. Okay, the, and any, that's for hydrants. Right. Any discussion? Seeing none. Those one, uh, raise your hand, please. Uh, oh, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. So then we'll do street lighting, 4316, Christy? Yep. Okay. Uh, and the amount is 260018 <coughs> Yeah. So moved. Uh, moved by Mike Plouffe, seconded by Regina. 260018 for Barbara. Any discussion on street lighting? Seeing none, those in favor, please, please raise your hands. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. We have um, lifeguards. It goes back to four, uh, 5420, which is under um, recreation, correct, Tim? Yeah. So that's that's a confusing piece because of uh, the account number hasn't changed when you changed. Right. So we're going to have to add or adjust the... Uh, I don't know. Maybe you should put the dollar in there in the total. Is that dollar shown in... In uh, re recreation, so you're going to have First to add all, it. I don't understand something, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in the prior budget committee, we wanted to reduce that to zero, but we said, well, let's leave a dollar in so they can spend it anyway. But the fact is that that's a sub line item and it doesn't. So are you making a motion, Tim? So we ought to just eliminate the line entirely because it doesn't affect your ability to hire a lifeguard because it's not a line item, it's a sub line item. Are you making a motion? To uh, reduce that to zero. Am I, am I wrong on that, Fred or Christy? If you eliminate the purpose, whether it's a sub line item or not, you will eliminate the purpose. Right. Well, the purpose is not specified in the DRA budget, which is what we signed. And and so it's not specified there. Yeah, I know. And neither are sergeants in the police department. <laughs> right. Okay. So if you eliminate the money, we, then we can still hire police. police, police oh, I'm happy to put. The, I'm happy to put the dollar under whatever. I'm not going to eliminate the money necessarily. I'm just saying that the we can take it out of our book because it doesn't belong in parking and recreation. Management decided that I guess two years ago, right? Yeah, we did. We we, we, we removed it. Yeah. From parks and recreation, and right. yeah, and so I'm just trying to clean up the the book a little bit. That's all. Uh, we don't need the subline kind of hanging out there. Because uh, it, I don't see any functional purpose for it. That's all. If you put it back in park re a recreation, then the park and recreation budget is at large hiring the entire lifeguard thing, even if they cost seventy-five thousand dollars rather than twenty-five. That's one of the reasons we removed it. Yeah. Right, but we need to change the line item itself because the line item is still reflecting that it's part of parks and recreation. But how do we put it under other safety services? But notice the account number is still an account number of Parks and Recreation as far as the DRA is concerned. According to DRA, yes. If you put it in Park and Recreation, my point is... I don't want to put it there. Well, you either have it here or another, other safety services or it goes in Park and Recreation. Just looking for a way to correct the situation, that's all. I don't, I don't really care how it's correct as long as it, if it's not just hanging out there. Okay, Which well, is what it appears to be to me right now. Okay, Tim. All right, thank you, Tim. It's, it's going to... It's going to just be under other safety services. Well, we'll let it hang out there for a little while longer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let's let it hang a little longer. Okay. Any? Um, it is worth consideration. Okay. Any other questions regarding? No. All those in favor? Who made the motion on this I, one? I did. Mike, I you made the and you seconded it. Okay. So we just passed. They're all passed, correct? We've just done them all. That are on this Did we do board. revenue yet? Hold on. We wanted to do can, revenue. Can well, I we ask no, you no. Please, what's that fold was what? Excuse me. You've been talking about life dots. What? What is that? One dollar. One dollar. Okay. 
There was no motion, so there's nothing to write. Mike made the motion, and Regina seconded it. Oh, that was a motion for other safety services. Do it again. We didn't have a lifetime motion, did we? Hold on, hold on. I don't think we had a motion for that. Barbara, okay. We took a vote on uh, hydrants, correct? Yeah. And that who made... A vote on other safety services. Right. Mr. Rage and Mr. Moore, a second. Took a vote on street lights. You, but you refer to the number as 4299, right? And then 4316 for street lights. Right. And we voted on that, correct? Yeah. So I, I believe, what, now who made the motion on lifeguards? Nobody. Nobody. Okay, Mike. I'll, I'll make it. Mike. Second. Regina. A motion for one dollar on lifeguards? Yeah. For one dollar. Okay, just did it. Just now. Okay, we're going to vote again. I thought those, we were only voting on legal items. That's not in the DRA budget. It's not a legal line item. All those in favor, just raise your hand, please. Everybody. Violating our own procedures. Okay, Tim, you're not. No, so you're I'm not going to vote to violate your procedures. Okay, so you're abstaining. All right. No, so I'm voting against it. Oh, okay. Oh, He's oh, voting against oh, it, oh, and all the others were for. And we're going to let that hang out there for another year. It's going to hang, <laughs> hang out there. It'll go under 4520, with just like it reflects right there. Right. Okay. Fine. All right, patriotic purposes on page 62, please, and then we'll be finished with this. We can then move on to those um, very wonderful foreign articles. Patriotic purposes under Paper, executive. Yes, we have, um, we have zero increases on that. Is there any uh, discussion on patriotic purposes or... Uh, it's 4583 and 4589. Exactly, there's two numbers there. Um, do I have a motion for us? Okay. Guys. Moved by Mike Plouffe, seconded by Regina. We're talking about lines 4583 and 4589. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those uh, in favor? I, what's the total? What, what's the it's, total uh, we're working on? It's 2850. 2850. $2,850. Okay. And that was moved by Mike, seconded by Regina. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Let's do that, Luke. Tim? Uh, all those not in favor? And those abstaining. Mr. Chairman, uh, patriotic purposes, uh, 4583. Yes. Is 2350. Yes. And well, we, no. we added uh, the other, other. The other line item is 4589, other yes. flower gardens. And that's what? That's 500. Yeah. So you only you just passed patriotic purposes for a combination of those two. No, we, you specifically said both. Both. Both, I said both line items, 4583 and 4589, and the total was 28. Uh, All right, well, that's one vote. Then I'm in favor of it. Okay, so that's unanimous. Uh, unanimous, Barbara. All right, now moving on to the Warren articles, which, let me see. That's the next thing we're talking about. Warren articles. Yeah, we did all that already. So, the first one we have on right on the top for us is, oh, by the way, just for the record, Barbara, uh, Steve Henderson is excused tonight, and Brian is simply not here. Okay. So, information technology upgrades. Um, do I have a motion from anybody to recommend this? I'll give you one. Okay. Mike Pluff has made a motion, and Regina seconds it. And um, what was that phrase, Tim? Red is written? Okay. So could you please to accept it, red is written. Okay. Accept it, red is written. I'm not going to read this whole, I'm not going to read any of these. Um, okay. So, Fred, do you want to just discuss this a little bit? The selectman would like to um, take some time this coming year and study um, through this warrant article upgrades to the existing town computer service systems uh, purchasing software hardware services including uh, any necessary support items to upgrade the fire department primary dispatch EMS and records management ser services and software and to replace and upgrade computers and communications equipment and upgrade and outsource the town's website hosting services uh, the sum of 120000 to, to come from the unassigned <coughs> fund balance um, as of March 31, 
16. Thank Excuse you, me, President. December 31st, 2017. Uh, the idea is to uh, try to uh, come to a conclusion as to what is necessary uh, to upgrade our existing computer services and bring us into the year 20, 2018. Okay. Thank you, Fred. Thank you very much, Mr. Manager. Uh, any questions from this committee? Tim, please. Uh, you mentioned that this was for a study, Fred. And yet, I don't see the word study in the warrant article. You have to study it before you can implement it. The idea is to study this and to implement these changes uh, so the systems will be better for the town. And I guess that's the genesis of, of uh, uh, the essence of my question is that we don't have, apparently, we have these general categories we're going to throw some money at, and that's about all this warrant article says to me. Am I, am I misreading that somehow? We have four things that we're looking directly at. We're looking for the fire department's primary dispatch, EMS, and records reporting services software. Um, they are currently using software. It's referred to as IMC, which is more based for a police department. They've been looking at more fire software, and there's a suite of software that will um, take care of their dispatch, their fire reporting, their medical reporting, and their fire inspection. They've visited with, uh, had several different vendors come in and sh uh, show them how their software works and have a ballpark figure of about $77,000 for that. So that record um, reporting services software is $77,000? $77,000. Okay. These are just round, just from different people coming in. They've had a couple vendors come in, and that was just their ballpark figure there. Is that an annual fee or? Uh, uh, no, it's, I don't know what the annual fee was on that. I don't have all I'm those details. I'm wondering if it's a flat-out license fee for the software. This, the 77000 I believe, was to implement it, to, buy, to purchase the software, and to implement it. Then right. after that, I would assume that there would be an annual fee like you are speaking of. I, don't, I wasn't involved in this. It was a package deal, no doubt, including hardware, it sounds like, at 77000 I wasn't involved in what was what the vendors that came in, but I know that that was the figure that was given um, when we were drafting this article, given to the assistant town manager. So seventy seven k roughly for records reporting services software, right? for the fire, fire department, fire which is department. their whole, it'll run everything at the fire department and it'll hopefully um, intertwine, it should be. Okay, be so it's fire department's primary dispatch, EMS, and records reporting services software. Right. Dispatch, All fire that reporting, is medical reporting, and fire inspection. It's a suite that would encompass that whole entire department. Okay, so 77,000 to the fire department, period. Yes. Okay. And then the other uh, large larger of the cost items in here would be to, um, and I think it said that right in there, let's see, necessary support, upgrade and outsource the town's website hosting service. Um, we've spoken with a couple, with two different vendors on that, and the uh, initial cost is probably just under $25,000 to have someone come in and build the uh, website. It'll be more user friendly, people will be able to search for things. I know that's one of the complaints right now, no one can go on there and search, but if they wanted to search for um, Tim Jones, they would put his name in and they would be able to search, the, it would bring them to budget committee minutes and direct them right to the links. It would be um, access, mobile access for individuals, plus there would be forms that they could fill out online. Um, and that's just the 25000 to build the website. and. The annual cost on that, I do know, was $4,000 from the vendor that we did speak with and get a quote from, but we've also talked to another vendor on that, 4000 for the hosting service itself? Yes, for, uh, for the <coughs> yearly contract, but the initial would be between twenty one and twenty five. we're getting for a price on that. So, so those have, are the two big ticket so you items. A, you have a vendor in mind for, the, for this already? We just talked to two vendors. Um, there's two that we have met from going to NHMA conferences and stuff. One of them is... Uh, have the vendors written down here. Let's see. 
uh, one is Civic Plus and the other one is Muni Code. Those are the two we've spoken to so far. All of these would have to go out with RFPs and all <coughs> of that, you know, right. if, if the one article does pass. But those are the two main, the big ticket items there. And then other items uh, were repeaters for better cell phone services uh, or for when people come in and do trainings and for wireless connections, uh, some cell phone repeaters. And then Routers, basically. Routers, um, computers, yeah. computers for that are over and above that would probably be involved with the uh, fire department, I believe, for their new um, software. So some hardware, basically. Yeah, but the, the like software. I said, the just the big. So that's seventy-seven. Of that are the uh, fire software package and the outsourcing of the website are the two big items for the one hundred twenty thousand. But then you need some hardware to, yeah. in order yes. to run yes. this software. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, so you do. that explains the hundred and twenty thousand. So, yeah. okay, thank you. This this uh, yeah. wait, Sonny. This approach. Tim still. I assume gave birth the from the uh, technology audit that was done last year. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Um, there are other um, uh, activities associated with that yeah. uh, that are not in this one article. I believe you you put a policy out, Fred, that. You're going to have a conduit put in for future fiber optics. Is that correct? Whenever you bust open a road, we when we're doing a large excavation in a roadway, like the uh, proposal to uh, replace the pipes running across the marsh, we'd, we'd be uh, digging up all of along uh, the side of Route 101. It's our excuse to get in there and put a conduit in so we can run fiber optics in the future if we have to. Right. And they're putting in a, uh, such a conduit is like very cheap, right? Uh, the conduit's nothing. That's, right. that's very inexpensive to do. I would hope that that would be done every time you dig up something that we could put a conduit because it's so cheap and you're already there, uh, regardless of where it is in the town. Because eventually everyone's going to get fiber optics. Yeah. Anytime we have a, a, a major excavation, yes, but okay. small excavations, okay. no, obviously. Right, right. Okay. I, I just wanted to be clear on that, and I'll, I'll, I'll let my uh, other members speak. You're finished. Okay, point. thank you, yeah. Tim. Um, Sonny, you had your yeah. hand up. I noticed this is a fire in EMS. What about the police department? Police department's on its own system. Or shouldn't they <coughs> coordinate it? Uh, they are coordinating their own system. Yeah, we're not prepared to bring them into the town system at this point. That would be a major expense. Yeah. A very major expense. And this, they already have, they're already using the IMC software, yeah. which is for the police department. So they're right. prob most likely, I can't speak directly for them, but my guess is they didn't ask, so they're probably happy with the software that they have. Oh, uh, if it, emergency management systems has to involve fire and police. Sonny, Sonny, I can answer that for you, okay? Sonny, look at me. I can answer that. The fire department with medical, the, the police wouldn't be doing medical. Fire does a lot of stuff with medical records, a lot of medical records. So it's good. They're, they're, they're trying to use, they were using the police right. software, and it's really not applicable for a fire department because they do a lot of medical stuff. And so I can understand completely why they'd have to have their own software from a specific vendor for the fire department, okay? That's the answer to that. Yeah, so the, that, yeah. that software is also HIPAA compliant. Police Department Which, is not. Exactly. And that HIPAA is a big deal for, you know, for privacy, for people's medical records. So I can understand this. <coughs> Jenny, you had a question as well? Yes. What is the undesignated undes balance? The fund? Fund balance? Yeah. What's the total on that? I had all that with me last, year, last week. It's, I think it is... <coughs> Do you remember Tim when I was here last week? I didn't bring all that report. I think it was six million. Yeah, it was six or seven million dollars. No, it was, it's in the six structure. I can't remember if it was six million and thirty-six thousand or <coughs> six million six hundred and thirty-six thousand. Six six. I think it's six six. Six six. Six six. six, six. six. What are you talking about? And how uh, long the did unassigned fund balance? Oh, yeah. The unassigned okay. fund balance. Yeah. yeah. How does it get to be six million? I mean, isn't that the money? That's the difference between expenditures and revenues. It's, it's yeah. the surplus ex expenditures that are left over. Yeah. And the increase in revenues. Yeah, okay. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Some <laughs> of that, well, some of that sometimes is used to return. To we were that. using, in the last two years, okay. we've used 1.6 million to reduce the tax rate. Okay. And you still have a reserve of six. Yeah, we have, we're supposed to keep 5% of the total town appropriations in reserve, right? Okay. Right. 
Right mm -hmm. now, I think we're just full, or right at the 10%. Yes. Or approaching eight, I think, with right. all the Warren articles yeah. that I have. Yeah, because I was going to say, we spent 440000 of all the Warren articles passed. Right. Okay. Are you all set, Jenny? Yep. The intention was Thank to you do very that. much. Okay. To keep the cost up. Okay. Anybody else have any questions on this Warren article? Seeing none. Oops. I think uh, I think what Sonny might have been going, but certainly where he inspired me to think about, was the, <coughs> the interface between police and fire relative to dispatch in terms of coordination, that kind of thing. Um, it's already coordinated. We have dual dispatches set up in case of emergency in both facilities. I mean, with regard to this new software, it will it be will it be an interface with that software itself? The interface will not be for the two departments. You don't you don't mix those two things right. together because you're going to violate HIP if you do. Right. Exactly. Oh, I see. Okay. So you got the Chinese firewall in there. Uh, got the fi the firewall in there, but in, in case of emergency, let's say the police department, the police facility goes down, we have a second police facility in the fire station and we have vice versa for the fire department and the current uh, police facility so okay. when we move the headquarters up here we set that system up we also have a system that combines um, emergency management with all those systems okay and that is in the uptown fire station so there is consideration of the interface between the police and fire as appropriate in terms yes. of what law would, uh, law would allow such as HIPAA right yeah, yeah. thanks what's that Tim any, yes. any further questions from anybody, uh, Sonny? Yeah. Can we check with other towns, see what they're doing to coordinate their services? To coordinate? The services, it's about the same size town. To coordinate what? The services, police, fire, emergencies. Emergency services uh, come, the individual departments, they, 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 they're divorced from each other for a reason. Uh, you can't combine the two of them into a single system. Each one has to have their own system because there are certain laws that govern what they do and how they do it. I understand that, but I mean, you, you, you know, the, the system should coordinate. To coordinate, well, when I, when I look at coordination. Yeah, I mean, you said you've got people, a system that will. We do coordinate uh, between the systems, yeah. okay? But it's, it's, it's more a human interface than anything else. All set, Sonny? <coughs> Thank you very much. Any what Sorry, um, these are simple ahead, questions. Tim. Go ahead. Uh, assuming the warrant article passes, when would you anticipate putting out? I believe you said a request for proposals. That would go with the normal the system, yeah. Yeah. yeah what, what would be the uh, time frame for that? So it'd be sometime during this coming fiscal year. Right after after the like April. Or? I would think for the website one, we could probably have all of that done within a couple of months. I shouldn't take that long. I wouldn't believe. I don't know about the software though. I mean, we, we've, we've structured it so that we could run out to 2020 if we had to. Right, right, right. The reason I ask is that, you know, I've done my own analysis from years ago when I was on the Selectman's IT Committee, and, and I discovered some rather interesting vendors that I didn't hear you mention, and I thought maybe uh, I could get some of those names to you so that you could Absolutely. send out a request for proposal. We send them out to, if we have a list, we definitely send them out. So if you would give us the names, we would happily send them the request. Right, I just want a kind of an idea in my head when I need to get it to you, because you know, there's all kinds of things on my plate. I just like to do it tomorrow, but. I um, would say. Um, if I have it done by uh, April 1, I'll be okay? I, yes, that's what I was going to say about there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Okay, we're ready to vote on this. Seeing no more questions. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, it's unanimous to recommend. All right, next one is uh, paralegal. And do I have a motion to recommend this um, this particular thing called paralegal? Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of twenty-one thousand fifty-seven dollars for the purpose of hiring a part-time paralegal in the town council's? Office, majority vote required. Note the Warren article contains the cost of 39 weeks from April 1st, 2018 to December 31st, 2018. Total yearly cost $28,075. Motion from somebody, Regina, thank you very much. Seconded by, by David. Okay, Barbara. Motion by Regina, second by David. All right, um, would you like to talk about this, Mr. Manager? The purpose here is to, we, we, we did have two people in the legal department full time at one point. We lost one because of a death. Um, 
we, we're not planning on, on, on re-enlarging the legal department back to two full-time attorneys. That's just not going to happen at this point. Uh, we need somebody who can do the paralegal work for town council. He's very busy. He's busy all the time. Um, it's not unusual for him to work an entire weekend to try to get cases brought up to par and, and be ready for court. Uh, but somebody has to do the legal research work. Yeah, it has to do the typing, you know, the, the, the preparation of material for the courts and so forth. He has to formulate it all, but somebody's got to help him do that. He can't do it all himself, and a part-time <coughs> secretary isn't going to help. Somebody has to have some paralegal knowledge in order to get some of this material done. There's a lot of research work that goes on uh, in, in that department, and, and you need to have somebody who's familiar with the law, with the cases, uh, with the rulings of the courts and so forth to help counsel formulate that material. That's very important. We, we, you don't have him out doing clerk work, so to speak, uh, the paralegal work, uh, when he should be doing the counsel work, the actual attorney work. And uh, so we're proposing to have a paralegal hired at part-time, $25 an hour, uh, to do that work. This would be uh, part-time in accordance with current town standards, uh, not more than 32 hours per week uh, under the statute, and that, that may decrease depending on what they do with the statute. Um, and the, the current cost annually would be $28,000 in round figures. Uh, you already have that $28,075. $28, Very important for us to do that. We tried last year <coughs> for the, uh, uh, an unpaid uh, uh, legal student to come in and help that was very good, but it didn't do everything we needed to have done, which meant town council was still out doing a lot of this legal, legal research on his own without any help at all. He just needs that help. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Um, I just want to mention that um, the young man that was there last summer. It's very good. Um, yeah, he was, I met him a few times, wonderful. Is he coming back? I thought I heard something about he might be coming back this summer as well to internship. That hasn't been decided at okay. this point. Well, I, I hope he does because, of course, having one year already under his belt would oh, yeah. that make him yeah. that much more uh, valuable. Okay. Uh, Jenny, you wanted to ask a question yeah. about this? Yes, I do. Go ahead. Why did the selectman cut it out? Uh, we, I cut it. Personally, I took it out of the budget. I wanted a separate Warren article. Because Why? Because I didn't want five people to vote on it. I wanted the town to vote on it. Maybe that wasn't clarified in saying okay. that before. Okay. Thank you, Regina. That clarifies that. But and yeah, who is this know. selectman that's been missing on all these votes? Oh, Jim wasn't here last week, and we did okay. those. We did all these. Been away for a week. We did all these <laughs> last week, so right. that's why. Okay. And when you say well, last she's done week, Monday. Oh, uh, Monday. You mean Monday of this week? Same right? week. Wow. Right. Okay. We're still in this <laughs> week. That may <laughs> change. I, I know it may change to five zero. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Certainly. Okay. So, son, is that satisfy you, Jenny? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And Sunny. Yeah. Please. Uh, I when I looked at the list of cases that Mark provided us. They all have outside counsel. You paid them so far 146000 through November, right? To get outside counsel prepped for all that material, you know, we, we don't hire outside counsel to have him do uh, prep work for stuff that we already have in hand and needs to be organized uh, and sent to outside counsel. Yeah. Otherwise, those charges would be three times what you're looking I at. I understand that. What well, my concern is all these suits should be done between multi-towns. It shouldn't be Hampton suing, acquiring for, for the problems with Copley or, or Wicca. We do. When well, you're talking about uh, Copley Landfill, yeah, those, sh those expenses are shared with other towns. <coughs> but normally, if, if a town sues somebody, you don't, you don't sue them uh, with two or three towns, each town's represented by their own attorney. Well, since I've been on the board, every time we we sued the aquarium, they ended up going to the Public Utilities Commission, getting their legal costs added into the bill. Every you, everybody does that. <coughs> I understand that. I can't I'm prohibit. Looking at these suits, and you know, I can't. There's no revenue attached to them. It's just pouring money out. We well, hold on, hold on, hold that's on. That's not true. Let him. Let him that is it. not true. It's absolutely not true. Okay, so Aquarian has the right to go to the Public Utilities Commission and add all of their expenses into the rate. Okay. 
okay? Did they mention at all that we had reduced their, their rate of recovery by more than 1% in their total billings on the last case we took before the Public Utilities Commission? I think the last time they came before the board, they said if you want to test for PFCs, there'll be another 16% increase on the cost. They're going to increase it anyhow because the federal government's requiring them to do that. Yeah. And so is the state government requiring them to do that. Our, our point is that they should not take all of that money away from the ratepayers. Some of it should come out of their expense okay. and their profit. Well, In order to do that, right. we uh, have to go on, to the Public Utilities Commission. Hold on. We're going to be talking, we are talking about a Warren article here to hire a part-time paralegal, and we're going to stay on subject, okay? You're drifting far away into other things. We're not going to do that, okay? So... We're, going to, we're talking about a Warren article here, so anybody have anything to add or <coughs> comment, any questions about this Warren article about hiring a part-time paralegal? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. This Warren article was presented to us in the context of the burden that exists in the legal department. Therefore, I believe the questions related to the burden of the legal department is appropriate in discussing this Warren article. Okay. Any other question? Any other comments or questions? If no one does, I do. Well, then um, let's hear them. We have an internship now, correct? So this we had an internship. Do we still have money? Are we actually going to pay an intern next year? Or? The intern was yeah. free. All right. There was a discussion about giving a stipend to an intern. Yeah, we don't have any money in the budget for an intern. It's not. Okay, fine. And my other question is related to the physical space. I understand there's, again, concern about physical space being a challenge. This would be a part-time position, mm -hmm. okay? It would only be half-time during the course of the week at the most, and the other position that's up there is half-time as well. So there'd They're be no space hours. problem, both 20 hours. So basically, you got they work opposite each this other. is the second person that share the same seat. Yeah. The seat's going to stay warm for 40 hours a week. <laughs> who's, the, <laughs> who, who's the other one keeping the seat warm? The secretary that's the in secretary. the budget and has been in the budget. The secretary of the in the legal department. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So this is the paralegal in addition to a secretary that we already have. Yeah. We added the secretary last year, right? No, the secretary's been in there a while. Yes, several years. Yeah, Anne yeah. was in there. Anne was in there before Wanda passed. Yeah, she was in there for four years, and uh, actually seems like just yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she was hired a, a, a couple true. months before Wanda passed, yeah. and uh, to help out in that department. Yeah. So when there was two full timers. So. Time flies by. Um, anything else, Tim? No, that's it. Okay, so we're going to vote now. No, vote. Jenny has a question. No, I'm just thinking. Oh. If you want an intern, you're not telling me, Miss. The town manager, that there's not five thousand dollars somewhere in that line item budget that you couldn't get, get the interest. That this is where the five grand went. So there's not five thousand anywhere in your budget that you could find. No, nope, and I don't have any authority to hire an intern, and the selectmen haven't granted any authority to do that. So, Regina, you want to? I just on what we actually did talk about the intern, and we compared right. it to having a paralegal at one mm. of our meetings, and yeah. we decided to go with the part-time paralegal instead of the intern. I remember that conversation. I watched that meeting. So that, okay. that this is where the money went, right? Okay. okay. All right. Note, Mr. Chairman, that the note. Okay. budget that Jenny was referring to is 220000 approximately. And if this budget doesn't pass, the default is allocating only 180000 So you've got a $40,000 delta between those two budgets. I don't know what's going to happen if this budget doesn't pass. Well, we'll, to we'll, cross that, right, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay, so all those in favor, raise your hands. I have David and Mike Plouffe, Steve LeBranch, Regina, Chuck Rage, and Ginny Bridal. All those opposed? I have Sonny and, uh, and Mr. Jones opposed. Thank you very much. We're moving on to the next one. Uh, door replacement for the town offices for to raise an appropriate $15,000 for the purpose of replacing the exterior doors in the town office building. The doors will be replaced by sliding doors to prevent wind damages that are a continuing problem. Maintenance of the doors, mostly from wind damage, has expended the sum of $11,153 since 2009, and expenses are continuing. Majority vote required. Board of Selectmen recommended 4-0. And do I have a motion to... Moved by 
Uh, Mike Plouffe, seconded by Regina. Any? Would you like to discuss this at all, Fred? It seems pretty obvious that. Well, as you <laughs> perhaps came in tonight, you notice that one of the doors is not operable because the uh, the uh, mechanism that governs the door automatically closes it is torn apart by the wind a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we're still trying to get the parts necessary to take it apart to refix it. This has happened now five or six times since last, since last the beginning of last fall. <clears throat> it's getting to be extremely expensive. Um, putting sliding doors in will stop that process so they won't be able to be grabbed by the wind and right. torn off their hinges. Right. Uh, and that's the intent. It will be similar to the library. Yeah, the 11153 is is not the total cost this year yet. Assuming that uh, that door is rebuilt before we uh, okay. we actually get to the end of and the year. And this isn't something you're going to do, try to do out of some of the money that's that you have left this year. No, this is a fairly large I'm operation. Stand by so. Okay. All right. Any uh, discussion from any members here? Um, Chuck had his hand up first. Go ahead, Chuck. I, I think this should be in regular maintenance. I mean, well, that'd be fine. But uh, this came up after the regular maintenance and regular budget was approved. Okay, and Jenny, you were going to say I'm the same thing. I'm agreeing with Chuck 100%. This should have been in maintenance, and if it came up after they could have amended the budget. They didn't. They didn't. That's right. They didn't. But because it, didn't have, it didn't come up to after the Board of Selectmen had the budget either. Right. Correct? This is a brand new one, I believe. Yeah, we just saw it on Monday. So if this yeah. goes down, you're just going to keep repairing what's there, or you're going to find it, find it with leftover money? Because you can't do it if this goes down, right? I don't have any leftover money in the town budget. I've got to replace the roof of this building or keep it fixed. But what I'm saying, if this doesn't get passed, Wait, no they'll have to no. fix it. If it doesn't no pass, then we're going to end up spending thousands of dollars more to keep those doors operating. Right. right. Yeah. So if this is in the regular budget, I've you're got, able to do it. I've got $3,800 $3, in the regular budget for maintenance. That's it. And that's going for roof repair? That's mostly going for roof repair. Right. We discussed that last week, I think. Temporary roof repair. Yeah. They, they oh, yeah, indicated yeah. if we do the temporary, right. we should be able to keep the roof for another eight to ten years. Jenny, you weren't here last it. week, but we discussed that. But, but wait a minute. You knew, you knew before the, a month ago or the budget season that you had a problem with the exterior doors, correct? I got this price just three weeks ago. Okay, you, but they knew it. You knew how long have you known that you needed to replace the exterior door? Ten years. Okay, so somewhere in that ten years, we probably should have found the fifteen thousand dollars. Well, that'd be good. Okay, but we, but okay. we didn't. But we didn't. But we didn't. The, the problem is that I've got probably fifty or sixty thousand dollars worth of major repairs to do in this building right now. But I've been told to keep the budget the way it is, and that's the way I've kept it. And we've managed to, to trot along and just do minor repairs to things to keep things running. There are times down here we couldn't even use the toilets in this building because the, the pump system out here hadn't been cleaned since the building was built in 1970 and the pump was put in. The, the, the set tubs down here didn't work because nobody had cleaned the lines in this building since 1970. We had to work at that problem for almost a year to get it resolved. This building is a mess, and we're trying to keep it running without spending a lot of money, and I'm told to keep the budget to a minimum. That's what I've been doing. Should it be that way? No, it probably should not be that way. But you're talking about, Freddie, you're talking about the same problem that's with the wastewater treatment plant, the sewer system. Well, wastewater treatment stuff. plant's a whole different issue. But, I mean, it's the same thing in roads. We patched and we scraped and, you know we got to figure this out somehow. I don't know how. I, I, I don't disagree with that, okay? And the long, longer before I came here, the town has had five studies of the wastewater treatment plant. Every one of those studies has recommended spending millions of dollars to bring it back into shape, and every one of them has not been voted. That's the problem, because okay. the money is huge. And how do you do this staggered over a period of time? We're about to come in with another major warrant. Argument. I think it's Jermaine, Mr. Chairman. I No, no, it is. It is. And I think that, Ginny, <coughs> you know, the solution is that um, perhaps you should be budgeting $365 a year and every day buy a lottery ticket. And maybe you might win $500 million, and then we can fix everything all at once. I'd love to win $500 million and fix everything. And then we can fix it all at once, but that's, then there's reality. You're not going to win. You know? I, but, Steve, that's the problem that the town is facing today, is that we've 
had to put up by catastrophes that happened, right. projects that needed to be done, i.e. sidewalks, i.e. municipal treatment plants, i.e. roads. E. roads. And we've got to figure out how do we fix Life it. Life throws all these things at us, and we deal with them one at a time. No, we, we have been remits in doing it. And, and Ginny brings up roads. For many years, the town had in the budget X number of hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to fix roads. And the budget committee said, we don't need this anymore, and they took it out. You, you try to put several hundred thousand dollars extra into the town budget, right. and it defaults, which means you don't have anything again. So the same with sidewalks. Uh, we, we had this discussion here a couple of weeks ago. We got a warrant article for sidewalks, and we got some money in the budget for sidewalks. Why have, do we have the warrant article? Because the budget committee cut the money out of the budget, so we can't do the sidewalks. So we have to do the warrant article in order to get enough money to have a contractor come in and do the work. You can't keep on doing that. What's going to happen is you're going to have a catastrophic failure somewhere, and you're not going to have the money to do it. It's going to be an emergency. You're going to be in court looking for a special appropriation. That's what you're up to in the wastewater treatment plant. We have things down there in the normal plant that were replaced in 1974. In the normal plant in any other town, they would have already been replaced twice. We haven't even replaced them once. We lost a $48,000 pump just, just a few days day. ago, right. which we had to get. Thank God we've got the money in an emergency appropriation account. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have that money and we couldn't fix that pump and the second pump failed, don't flush because right. we're not going to be able to process the material. It's okay. that bad. Yeah. Okay. And, and I, I understand. This building's no exception to the no, rule. No, it isn't. And the thing is that, the thing is that, and I'm going to be very quick about this because I'm looking at the clock. I understand. Um, is that last night we had a village district meeting, and we had somebody from uh, Rockingham Planning talking about flooding. Oh, yeah. And flooding is something that we're not going to be able to ignore neither. Okay, and it's not something the town of Hampton is going to be able to handle by itself. It's a huge problem. There are a lot of things. There are a lot of things. Sometimes you wonder if you should get out of bed in the morning, but <laughs> but chipping away a little at a time, doing what you're trying to do best, and and unfortunately, there's so many things coming so quickly. It's, and it's, it's, it's like the street lighting at the beach. We had a great plan. We actually put the facility in, except for the lights and the wiring. Right. And and I've been trying for the last ten years to get uh, the last eight years to get back to it, and we're back to it this year because we need to finish that process. Even if it's just $100,000 a year, we need to do it. It's like rebuilding Route 1A and doing the sidewalks, okay? It, and the bridge, it needs to be done. There's no question about it. And we need to get together and get it done. So we need to start thinking about some of these things. You'll notice that this year in warrant articles, we cut over $2.5 million of our standard warrant articles out of the budget so we can get some of these projects done. Because they just not going to get done by themselves. And so I'm not. I, I, I just want to say I'm not against this, but I think th this, this has a better chance of going down. And, and a warrant article, when people look fifteen thousand for a door, they don't understand that it has to be Probably done. Probably not. But but we, if it's we in your budget, the, we looked at defaulting the budget. That was one of our concerns. <laughs> okay. So having said all of that, I have one. Thing to say. Okay, you're gonna have to. We're gonna to have to move along here question. because we're not going to be able to finish this other. It, it won't take apple. ten. But seconds. go ahead. Go ahead, David. We've got here. Oh, no, no, go since ahead. 2009, eleven thousand dollars right piers. Fix the door and get it fixed right. Period. Yeah. Well, you can't fix it because the wind keeps taking it and blowing it. I know. It. What I'm saying, that they're going to fix it when they get the right. Well, that's what that's this is all here. about. And right. it explains that right there. That's, that's exactly all. right, Tim. Are they power sliding doors, Fred? Thank you, fine. Are they powered? Yes, they are. Yeah. Be like the library. That includes the electrical system and all. Right. Yeah. Have else? you considered putting petitions that will block the wind so that the doors don't get blown by the wind? We could do that, but then we'd have to move the sidewalk out because the, those, those petitions would have to move out further and the sidewalk would have to move out further. We looked at that. It's, it's difficult because the main force of wind comes right down when it kind of rose. So, and the door that's usually broken is the one that's broken now, which is the one that intercepts the wind going towards the east. Yeah. So, the petitions wouldn't help that. Thank you. Okay. We thought about it. 
Can we all set to vote? I'd be putting cardboard boxes out there if I yeah. could. <laughs> let's, uh, let's vote on this and and let's show that we do support. Well, the petitions could be a, attractive. Oh, it'd be very attractive. I'm Put sure. a sign on them yeah. or so whatever. Okay. Eat it, Joe's. We can, do that with, favor. we can do that with sliding doors too, though, right? Yeah. All those in favor of this? Tim, are you? I'm raising my face? hand, Mr. Chairman. T okay, everybody, unanimous. Thank you very much. Let's try to get through this last one. Study Sewer Enterprise Fund. Uh, raise an appropriate $20,000 to engage professional financial advisors <coughs> engineers to study and report back to the selectmen. Uh, go ahead, Fred. Do you want to uh, talk on The this selectmen later? would like to know, and I think probably the townspeople want to know, because a lot of sewer departments are, and towns with sewer departments are going to this process, a sewer enterprise fund. Mm -hmm. There are pros and there are cons. And the selectmen made a decision as they were talking about these things to say, okay, let's study it. Let's find out what all the pros are. Let's find out what all the cons are. We'll lay them out to the citizens of the community and see whether or not they want to vote on this as a, as a warrant article when the study is done. There are, and I, in fact, I noticed uh, today when I studied the, uh, the proposed federal legislation, for instance, that um, they're talking about penalizing uh, businesses for certain things that can be done and certain things that can't be done. For instance, local property taxes. Is the, there was a, I don't know, I hope it's been stripped, but there was a provision in there that businesses couldn't deduct it, anything over $10,000. So that's kind of silly because it's a business expense. The question is, if they do that and this comes off the tax rate, they can then deduct this because it's a business expense. There's all kinds of pros and cons here. We need to look at all of them to figure out what it is that we should do and recommend to the town or a list to the town what those pros and cons are and let them vote on what they want to do. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Manager. Um, any discussion on this? Seeing none. This is a, a proposal to spend $20,000 to be, do a study on the enterprise fund. Yes. And the enterprise fund, as things exist now, are if we were to pay for the sewer that way, would, would not be deductible on the federal income tax for businesses or individuals. And I think that it would be deductible for businesses. It is an expense. Oh right, oh, right. Sorry, for individuals, most right. of, most of the property owners in town. Correct. And um, I think that, in my opinion. Um, on that primary item alone, the voters are never going to approve an enterprise fund. How do you know? That's my opinion. I, I, I just I understand. My, it's, my, it's just my gut feeling is that we're, going, we're, we're doing a study on, on, on uh, taking an approach of an enterprise fund that the voters are not going to buy in the end, no matter how attractive it's sold. That's just my opinion. Uh, I could be wrong. It's my own projection on the matter. Um, and I think we're losing not only $20,000, which is a relatively small amount of money, uh, but we're losing the time looking down what I think will be a dead end, ultimately. Uh, so that's my concern with this particular Warren article. Thank you, Tim. Regina? I would disagree. I think we're at a dead end right now. And not having anything set aside for the people that like to live here another 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah, this doesn't set anything aside, though. Uh, yeah, it does. No, it spends twenty thousand dollars for a study to see if this will actually work for the town, so it can be something that we can <coughs> have a nest egg for. So then next year, when we got to do another fourteen million dollars for the wastewater treatment plant, enterprise fund will work. The question is, will 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 the voters buy it? Well, you know That's what? The real you know what my I whole have. theory was was putting it on for this because this we could just do this study on our own. Am I correct, Fred? If we wanted to, yeah, you could take we it. We just couldn't that. implement it without yeah. a town vote. Was to get everyone on the same page as to why we're even pursuing this. Right. To and, see and, if it would work. And, and we don't know if it's going to work. I, I want to have my federal And it's not going to be up like what people go to Exeter and they, no offense, Chris. Tell me why I'm wrong. Why do enterprise. I not want my federal tax deduction? Well, you may not have it anyway. You may not have, may it, not have it, but I definitely have it Do you want to be able to flush your toilet for the rest of your life? The, the question is not flushing yeah. my toilet. I'm going to be able to flush my toilet right no matter what. Right, Whether we right. the enterprise fund is a question it's of how you pay for enough. it. Order, order, enterprise order, fund order, is, a, order, is nothing order. but a financing vehicle. Tim. Okay, order. Yes, Jenny. Okay, Regina just said you had twenty thousand dollars that you didn't ha it, that if this warrant article you didn't have to put it in this warrant article. Where did that twenty thousand? Well, we would have put it in the budget. 
You're not saying you have it now, right? Actually, because I was going to say, where's your 15,000? I wanted, I, this was my idea. I wanted specifically <laughs> stated. So the people, I, I am against it. I'm against an enterprise fund. I had it napping. I had it before. But I mean, it's, and how many studies is this? Uh, trash. Let's talk about trash. We studied and studied and studied. But if you guys want to study it and the voters say yes, go for it. But Thank you, Jenny. Okay, we're going to vote on this. All yeah, I can't recommend the voters vote for this. For All those reason. in favor of recommending me, this? We need, we oh, we need, need a motion. Uh, a motion. Uh, Mike, I'll make a motion. Way. Regina, second it, please. Okay. Um, all those in favor, raise your hand. So we have Chuck, Rage, we have Regina, we have Stephen LeBranch, we have uh, Mr. Plouffe and David. For those against, raise your hands. We have Mr. Jones, Ginny, and Mr. Um, Sunny. <laughs> Mr. Sunny. Mr. Sunny. And, Mr. Sunny. and Mr. that's the end of these Warren articles. And You'll have more. We'll have more we'll next have more. week, no doubt. Unfortunately. Uh, no, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, I've got at least three, four sitting on my desk. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the date? The end date. What's the end date for uh, We have a motion. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn from Mike Plouffe, seconded by Regina. All those in favor? Uh, what about Sackman's report? We're not doing that tonight. We're done. Thank you very much. It's 10 o'clock. Thank you, Channel 22. Meeting is ended.